totally different personalities. The Texas Aggies love to run the football, and in fact, they have been running the football down the throats of Southwest Conference teams for the last three years. The Cougars used to do it that way in the heyday of Bill Yeoman, but now since Jack Pardee has arrived on the scene, the Cougars like to throw the football with that run and shoot. They'll throw the ball upwards to 60 times a game. And the Cougars, since defeating Texas in November of last year, have not lost a football game in the last seven and try to remain undefeated today. Well, what is the run and shoot? We talked to offensive coordinator John Jenkins of the Houston Cougars. He put it up on the blackboard and then transferred it to the game tape to show you how it works. On the snap of the football, we're going to take Jason Phillips in a vertical, uh, well, a vertical stretch uh, position here. We'll get Kevin Mason uh, pretty well attacking the defense in the same fashion down the sideline. We're going to take James Dixon building his depth to the flats hard and fast in, in this fashion. On the back side, we're going to have uh, Brian Williams uh, running a, a fly route here. All right. Okay, and our quarterbacks will be coming out on a controlled rollout. If, if, J if James Dixon or Jason Phillips makes a particular call, we can change this route completely. We can change this route completely and, uh, and the quarterback now, his route will change to the point of, of coming and setting himself up and working, working to an adjustment of having Brian Williams break his route off, change his pattern to the corner here. So, Norm Hitchkiss, they love to spread you out. They have five receivers in every play, and on every play, every receiver is hot. Dacus can literally go to any of them. This is a team that just throws, throws, throws. They're almost impossible to prepare for in a single week's time. Some teams use the pass to set up the run. Some teams use the run to set up the pass. This team uses the pass to set up the pass. The offense is poorly named. It's not the run and shoot. It's the shoot, 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 run and shoot. But it was the run last week against Baylor, and that's what worries R.C. Slocum, the defensive coordinator for the Texas Aggies. He doesn't really know what to expect this week from the Cougars. After the Baylor game, there's an added dimension to it, and uh, that is uh, Houston's ability to rush the football, and that really gives us a lot of concern, the fact that, that they've proven that they can throw it, and now uh, last week proved that they have very capable running attack, too, so it presents problems. Well, we had some success last year, but they turned around, they made us pay for it, too. They had the long run there to Kimball Anders, so, uh, you know, I'm not sure that was all that good a deal. They'll probably take that trade off again, so we've uh, looked at what we did last year, and certainly... Uh, have tried to come up with some things that we'll do. And I think going in a game like this, you go out there and experiment a little bit and see what you can do and how much of your things are good. And uh, we'll plan to do that in the game. Norm, the Aggies saw the Blitz brothers return against Tech last week. Linebackers are going to be key today. Do they drop off and cover? Do they rush the quarterback? <laughs> Linebackers are going to have to make the right decisions today for A&M. All right. The keys to winning today for Texas A&M, Norm. Yeah, let's start with the Aggies. The key to stopping Houston is don't let them have the football, basically. Control the ball with the running game. Keep it away. I don't think you're going to sack Dacus very much, but you can hurry him. You can make him throw on the dead run, and that hurts the offense for Houston. And protect the football. Realize through the first three games of their season, Houston is plus seven in turnovers. Through the first four games of their season, A&M is minus Minus seven turnovers could be critical. Let's go to the Houston side of the ball in the keys to winning. A&M's got to be stopped on first down. If the Aggies get you in second and short, they'll hammer you all day. Balance the offensive attack. Run the football to keep the A&M linebackers honest. And third, when A&M comes with the linebackers, make them pay. Hit the quick pops. Keep them off balance. Keep moving the football. One more key bill for each team. We have three of the finest return men in college football here. Rod Harris for the Aggies, uh, James Dixon, and Macedric Callaway for Houston. Each team's got to stop the return people because it would not be unusual at all to think of one or two kicks returned for touchdowns today. One likes to go by the ground, the other by the air. We should have a dandy Southwest Conference style coming up next right here on HSE. Astrodome in Houston, Texas. The Texas Aggies 1-3 and three on the season. The Cougars undefeated at 3-0. and oh, And both teams defeated in Southwest Conference play. Well, normally about this time, we would be setting up the weather conditions for you.
but of course we don't need that in the Astrodome unless they have the air conditioning vents blowing in from one side or the other but it's perfect today it's perfect every day <laughs> for football as we see the officials meeting with the captains out in the middle of the field our referee will be Lloyd Dale and we'll get the referees and officials for you in just a moment as we get ready for the coin toss. Today's game is the 26th time that Houston and Texas A&M have played each other. And this series dates back to 1952. And in fact, Jack Pardee was on that 1956 A&M team that was tied by Houston 14-14 in Rice Stadium. That was the only blemish on A&M season. The Aggies win the toss, but they defer to Houston. Houston must, must then make the choice, and they apparently will receive. That's what it'll be. So the Houston Cougars will be receiving. Texas A&M will be kicking off. Bucky Richardson, a fine runner, fine option quarterback, and a great winner in his own right. Great stable full of backs up there. They're a very talented football team. Osgood does everything. I think this is why probably they've settled on him because he's not only a good runner, a good option guy, a good play action bomb guy, a good polished passer. Uh, he has his own package. And number 12, Pavlos, has his own ideas, a great passer in his own right. And then Bucky comes in there, you better be ready for the option because he can really execute that option. Three distinctly different offensive packages, three different individuals, and all great players in their own right. The most talented football team that we will face all year. Outstanding up front, great skill people, and a stable full of great backs. There's Osgood. He is coming off of a great game against Tech. And, it, you know, the Houston defense has really been surprising, too, Nor. It has been surprising, Bill. You think of this as an offensive machine, but the Houston defense is number two in the country against rushing, number 10 total. But realize that rushing may be a little bit deceiving in that when Houston gets ahead of opponents, the other teams have to stop running and start throwing. You can bet one thing. You can bet A&M believes it can run against Houston today. Aggies played around a little bit with the wishbone last week. Your referee, Darden Wilson, Rogers, Millis, Wetzel, and Weeks. Today's officials from the Southwest Conference. There's the series record. The Aggies lead by one since they both started competing against each other in the Southwest Conference. Each team has won six games. A&M has won only once in the Astrodome and five tries, and that came two years ago, 19 to 7. And we should point out, this is the first home game of the season for the University of Houston. They've been on the road for the first three games. Lane Talbot will be kicking off for the Aggies. Keep an eye on James Dixon, number 22. He is highly ranked in the nation in kickoff and punt returns. He's number nine nationally. Dixon can fly and it's going to be a short kickoff. Fair catch called for at the 31 yard line by Houston and that will be Andy Sexton the senior out of Kingwood Texas who made the fair catch so the Aggies are going to concede the yardage to U of H and not let them run it back. David Dacus pulls the controls. He's got the Smurfs. Yes, he does. Dacus on a pace to throw for over 2,500 yards this season. All five of these people are hot receivers on every play. Phillips, the leading receiver in the nation. Dixon, second. William Gant is the center for the Houston Cougars. We'll show you the offensive line in a moment. And going in motion is Jason Phillips. Cougars overloading the right side. Dacus going long. He's got Dixon. At the 40 to 35. Here he goes. Dixon. They can't tackle him, and he's inside the AM 15 yard line. An outrageous play right off the bat as Dixon simply runs away from him. Kevin Smith had a hold of him. Watch Dacus read the AM defense norm. He reads the trip rights, and then Dixon slants from the slot, and the defense simply can't get him. The contact is made up around the 40, and yet Dixon just keeps going. 56 yards. Kevin Smith trying to strip the football. Dixon is a lot stronger and a lot bigger than he looks down there. So the Cougars strike quickly. First and 10. Phillips 
five-yard line before he's run out of bounds by Gary Jones. Two plays, two passes, totaling for over 60 yards in offense right off the bat for Houston. Listen, if you have to go to the bathroom while the ball's in play, don't. This is a veteran lineup. Gant's a former 300-pounder, but they don't have much depth, can't afford injuries in this unit. Defensively for the Aggies, Leon Cole coming off a big game. Big game last week, couple of sacks, but this unit is small. Ball on the five-yard line. The Cougars need two for a first down. Kimball Anders may have the first down as he's right at the three-yard line. Aaron Wallace, one of the key linebackers for AM that you'll be seeing today, made the tackle. Maybe the best set of linebackers in the country, the Blitz brothers, Roper and Wallace, are terrific at rushing the passer. Bob and Batiste must plug up the running plays. And the defensive backs will have their tongues hanging out at the end of this game today. Maybe we should have listed this three deep. They're going to need a lot of them. Thomas is playing with an abdominal muscle strain. The Cougars need one on third down for a first. They need three for a touchdown. Bacus throws it away. Jason Phillips was the intended receiver. And a good job by Gary Jones as he took it away from him. And the Cougars may have to settle for a field goal. One of the things people have wondered about the University of Houston offense is, can you run it down near the goal line? They've tried to put in goal line offenses, and then they realize this offense is as good as we have, even at the two or three yard line. So they just keep in their same offense. Jackie Sherrill going for win number 100 today. Roman Anderson will be kicking. There you see the stats on him, but he's got a severe angle from the 10 yard line. It'll be a 20 yard attempt. Everything seems to be in order, and the kick is good. And the Houston Cougars have struck quickly in this game. We have only played a couple of minutes into the contest, and the Cougars take a 3-0 lead over the Aggies. They didn't get they the put the wrong ball. name, so, okay, he borrowed a uniform. He borrowed a uniform? That is Mike Adams. Take my <laughs> word for it. He borrowed a uniform. They no. didn't have time to put his name on it. That's the information I get from Philip Malleus. And he'll kick it off, and it goes to about the five. Now, keep Harris, fumble, and he falls on it at the 14. Well, for a walk-on with a borrowed jersey, that ain't bad. Meanwhile, somewhere, the folks of N. Howard are thinking, our son's playing for Houston. <laughs> For Texas A&M, Osgood at quarterback. Lewis is seventh in the nation at rushing 128 yards a game, but the freshman Wilson's a terrific fullback. Jerry Fontenot, one of the best. The heat might be on Cunningham today. Cunningham replacing L.B. Moon, serving the second week of a three-week suspension found with steroids. Osgood will throw on first down. Across the middle, it's in. Almost intercepted at the 22-yard line. Reggie Burnett, who played super back on offense for Houston last year, converted in the offseason to a linebacker. A sophomore almost made the interception. The defense for the Cougars, kind of smallish in Jenkins Montgomery. And Montgomery is a good, solid player, a four-year starter here, but the ends are small. Here's Darren Lewis, sweep left. Good pursuit by Houston. Cuts him off inside the 20. Lamar Lathan, number 46, along with Alton Montgomery, number 29, and on the tackle. Boy, those linebackers are active. And Lathan, one of the tops. Yes, he is. In fact, Lathan said, if I were at AM and got all the publicity, people would think I were as good as Roper. McDade's a converted defensive lineman. Jackson, the All-American here. But Alton Montgomery, the junior college transfers, really come on to solidify this unit. Third down, the Aggies need six. Osgood, rushed by Houston, knocked away at the 20-yard line. Alton Montgomery, the youngster that Jim Eddy says has really solidified the defensive backfield for Houston. Bill, he didn't even show up until just at the start of two days this year. They didn't know he'd be academically eligible. He was in camp three days, three days when they made him a starter. Did you notice the blitz, too, by Houston as they crisscross their defensive tackles? Craig Vesey really putting the pressure on. Sean Wilson will punt it. And a fair catch is called for by McCedric Calloway. 
at the 40-yard line. We're going to take a timeout. The Cougars will have the football on their own 39-yard line. They have the ball and the lead. Four of its 199 passes coming in intercepted. For a team that throws all the time, that's a fabulously low percentage. Dixon will go in motion. That overloads the near part of your screen. Dacus, quick pass to Jason Phillips. Good reaction on the play by Alex Morris, number 30. He is a senior out of Arlington. That is catch number 37 this season for Jason Phillips. I'm reminded of the horror film, He's Back, <laughs> uh, because he was a horror film to the Aggies last year. Nine catches for 114 yards against a and last season. Phillips, number one in the Southwest Conference. As Norm pointed out, 99 receptions last year. That's Dixon in motion. Second down, Cougars need nine. Here comes the blitz. Aaron Wallace, number 23. That's the key to the game. If the Aggies can get all the way to the quarterback with the blitzing of their extraordinarily quick linebacker, Brooklyn Wallace, they could create turnovers. They could muck up the Houston offense because People think that you're in good shape if you're a good throwing team, even if you got long yardage. That's not true of Houston. Houston survives on short yardage passing situations. Loss of seven on the play. It'll bring up third down, 15. Ball on the 34. Phillips in motion. Again, Wallace coming on the blitz. They pick it up. The pass is complete to the 41-yard line to Kevin Mason, number 86, a junior out of Houston, but the Cougars will be far short of the first down and that roar you hear from the Aggie faithful who breathe a sigh of relief. Bill, you're seeing what Houston does to a football game pattern right now. We're four minutes deep in the game. We're about to have our fourth possession. In a normal football game, there are about 13 possessions each. In Houston versus Wyoming last year, there were 41 possessions, 21 for Wyoming. Harris, he bobbles it, but look out. He almost got a step. He was tackled at the 27-yard line. Simon Rodriguez without a good punt. And Chris Ellison, a defensive back out of Dallas, Texas, made the tackle, a 33-yard punt by Rodriguez. And Harris has had some problems with both the opening kickoff and this punt. In each case, he may be having trouble with the roof here at the Astrodome. It's late afternoon when the game started. There is a sort of a glow to the roof here. And each time it appeared Harris misjudged the ball, Bill. The first one hit him high on the chest. And that one almost seemed to him in the face mask as it came down. In baseball, outfielders traditionally have trouble with day games in the dome. And why couldn't you with football? And that's well, what you look at. You've announced Astro games, and you've seen that happen during day games. Many times, many times. Now let's see if AM goes back to the bread and butter and starts slamming Darren Lewis at Houston. First down and 10 AM, 10.47 left to play. First quarter, eye formation. Lewis dots the eye. Lewis over left tackle. And coming up quickly is Alton Montgomery. We have called his number now three times in the first period. And Darren Lewis coming off of his biggest game last week, 177 yards. But the defense for Houston, number two in rushing defense. So something's got to give. The Aggies love to run it, and the Cougars love to stuff it. Second down, needing seven. The ball was handed off that time to Wilson in the middle. That'll be Simmons, number 33, Randy Simmons. Darren Warren on the tackle for Houston. There are the stats on Osgood, who started his first game against Oklahoma State. When Houston met Missouri, they put their All-American defensive back, Jackson, straight on the number one receiver for Missouri. Here they're not doing that. They're not assigning him directly to Harris. Third down and four for A&M. Pitch back, Lewis. He gets a block and he runs right over Norwood. Fumble and he fumbled it out of bounds. The Aggies will have a first down and keep the football. So a good bounce for Texas A&M. That time Norwood came up from his free safety position and Lewis steamrolled him. Again, Lewis knowing where the first down stick was, puts his shoulder down when he sees Norwood and then balls flicked out of there and the Aggies get a very fortuitous bounce of the football. 
Boy, what a lick by Norwood. First down and 10, ball on the AM 42 yard line. 940 left to play in the first quarter. Osgood on the rollout. He's going to go deep. Norwood is there, and it's over his head. He did a little pump fake to Rod Harris, trying to draw Norwood up. He did that, but Norwood with good second reaction. Norwood is out of Beaumont, Texas. You know, I can't believe the Houston team. Jackie Sherrill checking his play chart. Bill, we saw this Houston team two years ago. They were dead in the water. This, this stadium was empty. The club had little spirit. Pardee's worked a miracle. He works miracles everywhere he goes. Second down, still 10 for a &M. Option. Osgood will keep. Oh. Good job on the line of scrimmage. Darren Warren, number 97, the junior out of Crockett. Boy, Bill, you want to talk about a fortuitous play for the Aggies. Watch the ball as Osgood comes out of here. Watch the ball. It oh. comes right down into his hands. I thought he might have fumbled, so that's two fumbles by the Aggies so far on this drive, but they have bounced right back up to them. Third down, needing 10. Osgood looking for Harris. He'll go across the middle. He's got his big tight end. It's Mike Jones. He's across the 25 and down to the 22-yard line. The tackle made on the play by Norwood, but Mike Jones, the juniors, transfer out of Sacramento, California. The leading receiver for the Aggies and the tight ends. That's his eighth catch now for over 100 yards this year, and this one goes for 35. When he came out of Sacramento Community College, considered the best prospect on the West Coast last year in junior colleges, a big mobile tight end with big hands. The key to that play was all of the time Osgood had to pass. First and 10, the ball on the 23. 8.34 left to play first period. Osgood straight ahead. It goes to Robert Wilson, the freshman from Worthing High School here in Houston. Alfred Oglesby from Weimar was right there. Oglesby 6'3", 270. One more note about Jones. To t you can always tell by the quality of the teams that recruit you how good a player is. Jones' choice came down to Miami, USC, or A&M. That's three good programs. Wilson just came out of the game. Randy Simmons checks in for him, so it'll be Simmons and Lewis in the backfield. Second down, the Aggies need nine. The ball on the Houston 22. Houston leads it 3-0. Lewis. Oh. What a yeah, Trying to go behind Fontenot and McCall, but Keith Jenkins, the senior from New Orleans, and he's smallish at about 240, but he really put a lick on Lewis. Jenkins is trying to overcome a torn tendon in his foot. He's been slow to overcome it. It's always sore after games. But he's a fine player, and he really laid a lick on it. There's Keith. He's a veteran. And now the Aggies will send Harris and Oliver to the top of your screen, and they'll overload to the left side. Third down, needing seven for a first. Blitz Houston. Here come the Cougars. Watch the red jerseys. Osgood throws, and it's almost complete. Intended for Harris, broken up by Norwood. Boy, you could read it as Osgood started calling the signals that Houston was cheating the line of scrimmage. Watch, watch Norwood come and put a lick on Osgood right here. Oh, oh boy. Now, Tell you Scott what, Bill, Slater will attempt. It is tough to throw forward when your buttocks is going backwards. <laughs> you see Slater, he's only attempted twice this year. He's coming off of great years in 86 and 87. He's going to miss it to the left. And he's in a slump, a senior slump for Scott Slater. He misses, and that's usually automatic for that young man. Watch it again. Slater last year never missed a kick inside the 40, and he's missed two already this year. So with 7.03 left to play in the first period, the Cougars hold off the Aggies and retain that three to nothing lead. You know, if you're the defensive team, games settle into a flow, don't they, Bill? They move a little, you move a little. This team never lets you catch your breath. You know that every time they snap it, they're trying to score against you. That's, uh, of course, the philosophy of John Jenkins. 
The offense, number two in passing, nine in total offense. Coming off of that first big win, of course, against Louisiana Tech. And now we're going to see the spoon man, Chuck Weatherspoon, number 28 at s back behind David Dacus. Weatherspoon, and he is cracked at the line of scrimmage, but look how he still manages to squirm his way up for about three or four. Dana Batiste, O'Neill Gilbert in on the tackle for the Aggies. Weatherspoon is 5'8", 210 pounds, a sophomore. He's coming off a game against Baylor where he gained 99 yards and was instrumental in the defeat of the Bears. Look at him. He's number 28. He's built like a bowling ball, much like Robert Newhouse, who yep. does the radio here for Houston. Bill, he's built like a manhole cover. He is hard to bring down. Second down, Houston. Dacus throws it to Phillips a little bit behind him, incomplete. One of the reasons why Houston doesn't get many passes intercepted is the ball snap, the defense starts to read, by then the ball's already on the way, by then it's almost too late to make a break on the ball. It's almost like a wishbone on the wing, isn't yep. it? The way they read, the receivers read the defense, Dacus reads his receivers, and they go from there. Why doesn't anybody in the NFL use this offense? Well, June Jones, who was under party, uses it a little bit. They call it the red gun for the Oilers. It'll be third and seven. Pass was intended for Brian Williams, and they did not fool Mickey Washington. He was right on his back. Great job defensively for the junior from Beaumont, and the Aggies will force the Cougars to punt. Watch Wallace come in. 23, lower left of your screen. He blows in. See, that was the failing of that play. you got to cut Wallace down at the line of scrimmage, allow Dacus the time to throw. Baylor blitzed Dacus, but they didn't have the speed the Aggies have. Wallace can really fly. They're Pocket, and Rodriguez gets it off end over end, and it's going to take a Houston bounce. Harris right at the 30. Nothing but red jerseys. That's a late hit on Houston. A late hit on Houston. When we come back, they'll be penalized for it. Frank Bryan made the tackle for Houston. The Cougars lead by three with 6.08 left to play in the first period here on HSE. Lewis in the backfield is tackled for a loss by Reggie Burnett. Burnett, a sophomore out of Rayville, Louisiana, the hometown of Elvin Hayes. And so if he has as much success later on in life as the Big E had, those are two pretty good athletes out of Rayville. Amen. That play made, though, by Keith Jenkins, who drove the blocker back into the backfield and forced Lewis to change direction much earlier than he wanted to. Second down and nine, the ball on the 49-yard line of A&M. Osgood swings it out to Lewis. Cougars with good pursuit force him out of bounds for no gain on the play. Keith Jenkins and Burnett again. Tell you what, this Houston team has quickness on offense, but they have quickness on defense also. This is just a little hitch. The idea is to let the linemen through, but look at the coverage they get in the flats here. And Jenkins really played his block off nicely. So it'll be third down now for the Aggies. They still need nine at the AM 49 yard line with 529 left to play in the quarter. And somebody jumped for AM. There'll be a flag on the play. And the pass is incomplete. The Cougars will turn the penalty down. Alton Montgomery broke it up for Houston. It looked like the slot man. Slot man for AM jumped at the top of the screen. That was the kid Jones who'd split into the slot, uh, slot and he misread the snap count. So the Aggies will have to punt. Sean Wilson will do the punting. Let's listen to Lloyd Dale. Bill, do you remember the, the first must for Houston? Don't let AM get much yardage on first down. The Aggies have not had a five-yard gain on first down yet. McCedric Calloway is back deep for Houston. Wilson with a booming Whoa. punt. And it's going to go down inside the five and into the end zone for a touchback. God Sean please. Wilson, boy, he looked like the old man on that one, didn't he? Cheryl Wilson used to hit those with regularity for the Kansas City Chiefs. This youngster's becoming a very good punter. And I say that, Gerald, with a grin on my face when I say old man, of course. By the Good way, buddy who punted here after Kansas City punted for the Oilers for a while. And Gerald, one of the all-time best 
And watch Sun Sean. Look at that form, will you? Look at the concentration on the ball. Head down all the way through the kick. Boy, he punted that one off the world. The first play of the game, Houston went to trips right and sprinted a man down the middle. Let's see if they think they can go back to that for a big game now. All right, the Aggies will have Morris, Richie, Jones, Smith, Smith. They've got uh, six defense backs. Trips right. Cougars first and 10 from the 20. Houston leading it by three. Oh, somebody jumped and it looked like there was an audible at the line of scrimmage by Dacus. Jason Phillips didn't get it and jumped offside. What they're going to call here is illegal motion because there were two men in motion at once. You'll see that quite a bit with Houston. Yep. Because if he audibles at the line of scrimmage, he may send another back in motion. This is very complicated offense. You know, you think of running teams being in trouble when they get first and 15 because it's lengthened the yardage. This team is in just as much trouble because they're a short passing controlled offense. And the way AM is blitzing, they're not going to give him very much time back there. Time to use the running back a little bit here, Bill. Another, some draws and some screens. Another audible. Dacus going long. He's got, got Williams, and it's knocked away at the last minute by Mickey Washington. Oh, it was six points written all over it. Brian Williams had broken open at the 45-yard line of A&M, and Washington just swooped in and knocked it away. Look at this again. Dacus with pressure from behind lays it up, and Washington with a terrific job of closing on a ball that was about a yard under thrown. Look at how much he, he was so wide open. I think Dacus was trying to just make sure that he got the ball to him. Dacus is now four of eight for 72 yards. His last three, however, have been incomplete. Look out for the draw here. They have not used that play yet. Oh, and now the signals are messed up. It looked like Phillips went in motion. Dacus tried to change the play. And nobody uh, got the change. So Dacus will come over to talk it over with John Jenkins, Jack Party. Three games that had never been done before in Houston football history. Here comes the blitz, knocked away by Alex Morris at the five-yard line. The Aggie blitz is paying dividends. Bill, Houston's got to start calling the super back on the draw. They got to start giving the ball to, to Kimball Anders. We talked about the way you keep the Aggie linebackers honest by running the ball a little bit, and Houston simply has not done it. Look at that vertical leap, will you, by Morris. Boy, he got way up off the ground, 6 to 190 out of Arlington. Imagine bringing your cornerback on a blitz against a team that throws this much. Now well, that's nerve. Make you hurry. Third down now. The Cougars need 15. Dacus on the shuttle pass. Anders has got a block. He got by a man. 25. He's at the 30. He needs to beat one man. He dies. 45. He's across into AM territory. All the way down to the AM 35 yard line. Kimball Anders. And that's how you beat the Blitz. You got to use the super back to beat the Blitz. Screens and draws will do that. 52 now, yards, Norm. And this is a forward pass. It is a forward pass. Now there's a missed tackle here. He runs through the arms of the Aggie player, but once he does, it's Adios Kimball. Boy, Boy, Smith is having trouble with his tackling today, Kevin Smith. Yes, he is. Look at the run by Roper. Roper was blitzing the quarterback, and 56 yards downfield makes the tackle. Kimball wow. Anders with the big run. First and 10, Houston on the AM 35. Davis. He's got Phillips. Down to the AM 20 yard line. Brought down by Dana Batiste. Another first down for Houston. A gain of 12 on the play. Make it 19. Jack Pardee breathing a little easier just a moment ago. He was looking at third and 15, back deep in his own territory. And now the ball is on the AM 21, but that's the nature of the run and shoot. Now look at this. On first down at the Aggie 21, the nation's two leading receivers leave the field. But you got Cody Smith and Jet Brown. Brown number 23, an excellent receiver. Look out for the fullback here. Dacus going to go for all of it. And 
Did Smith look up for the football? The referee said yes. Kevin Smith was close to face guarding that time, and he needed to look up and locate that football, or Jet Brown may have been able to draw the interference call. To give you some idea how this offense has changed, you see that guy, Jet Brown, two years ago, 1986, in the last year of Bill Yeoman's coaching regime. Yeah, the defender looked back, okay. In the last year of Bill Yeoman's coaching regime, Jet Brown led Houston in receptions with 33. That wouldn't even lead him after three games this year. Second down, needing 10. Take this. He was intending it for Cody Smith, threw it behind him, and it'll bring up third down for Houston. So far, Dacus has completed six out of 13 for 136 yards. And Jackie Sherrill pacing the sidelines. That, that to you. It's a guessing game, a chess game between these two coaches. Another third down for Houston. A&M just jamming the line of scrimmage here. Dacus is hit behind the line of scrimmage, and the ball goes incomplete. Dana Batiste was coming in from his inside linebacker position, and he forced the incompletion. And this is going to be Roman Anderson to try the field goal. Watch number 48, Batiste. They simply send more men than Houston can block here. And Batiste, the unsung inside linebacker on this team, an outstanding player himself, gets free to hit Dacus. So Roman Anderson will be attempting it from the 28-yard line. Tack on 10 more, so it'll be a 38-yard attempt. Now, Does he have enough leg? Yes, it's good. Roman Anderson keeps his record perfect so far this season. Roman, what a story he is. The son for Tulsa that against was, the Cougars that 14 wasn't that to nothing legendary blowout was it no it wasn't <laughs> but an interesting story about that we'll tell you in just a moment several times Mike Adams freshman walk on from Pasadena 342 left to play in the first period Two Roman Anderson field goals, the difference in this game. Harris will take it at the nine. Harris. Great run back to the 35-yard line before he's run out of bounds by Kenny Perry. But a good return of 25 yards by Rod Harris. So the Aggies with good field position again. In fact, A&M really, except for one possession, has not had bad field position. A&M's decided they're going to go to the running game. Bucky Richardson in at quarterback. Here comes the A&M options and running game. I think they feel more comfortable with Richardson in there. It'll be Simmons and Lewis in the backfield. High formation. They'll go left with Lewis. Gets a block. Across the 40. And Lewis run out of bounds on the 41-yard line by Cornelius Price. It looked to me like he was going to run for big yardage, and then the Cougar red jerseys closed the gap. Yet this is the best first down play of the game so far for the Aggies, as Lewis gets them right at seven yards and sets up a situation in which Aggie opponents are uncomfortable, second and short, because here the Aggies can throw almost anything at you. Bucky Richardson. On the option, this is what he does best. First down, A&M at midfield. Gain of about 10 on the play. Lamar Lathan made the tackle for Houston along with Johnny Norwood, but Bucky Richardson now starting to get it in gear. They criticized him, Norm. They said he couldn't pass enough to keep you honest. But the Aggies feel like in Southwest Conference play, they don't need to pass to win. There's the passer on the team, Pavlis, over there on the left. And Osgood waits on the sideline. Bucky Richardson. Lewis, tackle in the backfield for a loss on the play. Glenn Montgomery, the senior out of Gretna, Louisiana. A flag thrown after the ball was declared dead. Jackson comes in to check what it's for. Didn't seem too upset by what the official told him. 
Jackie Sherrill says it's against them. Dead ball. Personal foul the other way. Maybe Jackie was calling it with his heart. Wait a minute, both ways. Well, that's when a couple of players get after it, and you don't know really who threw the first blow, so you call it both ways. So Cheryl and Pardee will get the explanation, and we'll come right back to the line of scrimmage again, right at midfield. And it'll be second down, about 10 and a half. Again, there's that situation now that the Aggies are uncomfortable in. They've got the running offense on the field in a long yardage situation. Richardson will keep on the option. And he's wrapped up for a gain of two. It was Montgomery again. The squatty body, they like to call him. At six feet, 265 pounds, a low center of gravity. He's hard to take out of there. Keith Jenkins, he's another smallish lineman. But that Montgomery, he, he is low to the ground. He's a tree stump, isn't he? I tell you what, now we saw, you see the situation the Aggies are really uncomfortable in. Bucky Richardson on the field in a passing situation. Third down, he needs nine. He's going to flip it back to Lewis. Lewis tackled by Norwood at the 42, shy of the first down. Houston wants the ball. And it's going to be about two yards needed for the first. Richardson signaling, let's go. We've only got about a yard. I don't think Richardson understands. He's got nearly four yards to go. He's signaling with his hands that they've got a yard to go. That's not true. That's the week Lewis is coming off of so far. He has over 25 yards now, and they're going to go for it. Well, not necessarily. Maybe not. They're going to let it that clock go. It's down to 131. He may take a five-yard penalty. 25-second clock is down to six. Now, if he puts his hands under, you can legitimately draw the other team offside legally. That's what they'll do. They'll run the clock down, take a five-yard penalty, and give Wilson a little more room to try to punt it inside the 10. Bill, I've got a question about that play. Why just stand there? Why not have Richardson about five seconds to go, put his hands under center, and start calling signals? And then if he sees somebody jump, say, snap it, and get the five-yard offsides. Maybe you need to meet with him after the game and suggest that, Norm. Because just standing... Houston's not going to buy that. <laughs> 107 left to play in the first quarter. Wilson, Beauty. end over end kick, and it hits at the 10 yard line. Now the Cougars need to get away from it. I'm telling you. And it's dead at the 13. Chet Brown, that ball hit about two yards behind Chet Brown. He took an awful chance of literally fumbling that football. That's what it would have been called. Another good punt. Sean Wilson punted at only 34 yards, not as far as his last punt, but very effective as it has the Cougars now bottled up inside their own 15-yard line with 56 seconds left to play in the first quarter. They may be about to do that. There's Anders back in. Let's see if we don't get a draw in this series. Remember, if the ball is mishandled, it is not a fumble. It is a forward pass. That's why the Cougars will use it so much deep in their own territory. Dacus. Blitz again, and he underthrows Phillips at the 22-yard line. He was guarded by Gary Jones very closely, but again, a big rush by the Aggies. Brent Smith, a defensive back coming. What the Aggies are doing is they're putting multiple defensive backs in. It's a six-defensive back setup sometimes, but then they blitz one or two of them. That's what and Baylor did. Houston's having a lot of trouble picking up the blitzes, and the problem is the guys blitzing are so doggone quick the Ropers, Wallaces, and then the defensive back types. Second down and 10, 51 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Quick pass to Dixon, and he's got some room across the 15, run out of bounds at the 18-yard line by Derek Ritchie, a junior out of Dallas, Texas. 5'11", 170. Dixon with the pass reception. That's the second reception for Dixon in the game. And it'll bring up third down, and the Cougars needing four. This may be the spot you go to the shovel pass, Bill. Incomplete at the 45-yard line. He was throwing it up. 
for Kevin Mason. And Mickey Washington was right with him. Washington's had an excellent game defensively for the Aggies, and the Cougars are punting more here in the first quarter than they've punted the first three games almost. Well, AM's done a really nice job of shutting off the long ball. Realize they've made some long plays, but they were on short passes. Simon Rodriguez will be kicking to Harris. The Aggies with a good chance to get some excellent field position. This time they don't try to block it. Whoa, what a punt by Rodriguez. Harris will go back to the 30. Did he outkick his coverage? We'll see in a minute. No, he didn't. What a tackle on the play by Larry Ball, a youngster out of Austin, Texas. There is a flag, however, all the way back at the Houston 31 yard line. Bill, that's where you'd have either illegal man downfield or you'd have holding by the receiving team. Well, that's a 52 yard punt by Rodriguez. So I think the Cougars are motioning it could be defensive holding against the Aggies. If that's the case, Norm, the Cougars will keep the football. Well, unless they rule that it occurred so late in the play, it is holding. Did it occur late in the play, though, after the kick had been gotten off? Apparently so. Yeah. They'll, they'll give the Aggies the ball, feeling Houston had gotten rid of the ball, and they'll march the penalty off as though it were holding on a run back. Ooh, I tell you what, this is going to put A&M. Houston punted from their 18-yard line, and it's going to put A&M. What a change of My field position. goodness. What a change of field position. In the middle of your screen, see if you can see it. Now, Rodriguez is standing on his own five-yard line. It happens at the 32. Here they come downfield. There he is. There it is. Yeah, there's the hold. Now... Rodriguez punting for a 44-yard average, so the Aggies will have it at the 18. So it goes from one 18 to the other. Six. Richardson to Lewis across the 20, run out of bounds at the 22. Johnny Norwood forces Bill, Darren Lewis out of bounds. When you count the penalty yardage, that was a 64-yard change of field position. Not My bad. Goodness. Lewis so far has carried the ball nine times for 35 yards, so they've got him well on his way to 25-plus carries, what they wanted, but he hasn't been able to bust the big one so far. 26 seconds left to play in the first period. The Cougars leading at 6-0. Lewis will take it left. Oh, what a job by Alton Montgomery coming in from his cornerback position. Oh, my. That, what an exclamation point to end the first quarter. Look at this submarine job by Montgomery. Hello. Oh, he went right by Ooh. Randy Simmons. Tell you what, it wasn't much fun afterward either. As he got hit, he got another blow to the head. And there we have it. The end of the first quarter from the Astrodome in Houston. The Houston Cougars are trying to remain undefeated. And so far, after the first 15 minutes, Lead in this game, six to nothing, right here on HSE. They at quarterback here to start the second quarter of play. The Cougars leading it, six nothing. Ball at the 24-yard line. Richardson, he's going to throw on the bootleg, and he has a receiver. There's Mike Jones again, 25, loses the football. He's run out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Cornelius Price slipped, uh, slipped the ball out of his arms. You really have to credit. Jim Eddy, the defensive coordinator from Houston, and R.C. Slocum, the defensive coordinator from A&M. These are two good offenses that have been bottled up pretty well so far. B.C. did a pretty good job of staying home for Houston. Now watch the strip right here. Oh, nope. he almost stripped it and kept it in bounds. Tell you what, Bill, near the end of that play, we saw something that could have been a clip. Rushing. Totals going to the Aggies' favor. Richardson now will change the play. Everybody was in motion. There's going to be a flag on the play. Richardson throws to Harris, and it's knocked away by Cornelius Price, but we'll bring it back. Yeah, the back for AM was adjusting as the ball was snapped, so that's backs in motion. Since the play gained nothing, you kind of get the feeling that Houston may decline this and let it be second and ten the offer now to the captain of the defense, Keith Jenkins.
single motion. Offense declined. Now, here's where Houston's going to pile up a few yards on this side of the offense, right? Yeah, here. when they add up all the total offense. So, so much for balancing the offense. Hey, R.C. Slocum talking to his defense right now while the offense has second down and 10 from the AM 35 yard line. Richardson keeps it on the option and a pretty good gain. He gets about four. Gang tackled at the 38. First man in was Lamar Lathan. Keith Jenkins also on the bottom of the pile. But here again is that situation. We talked of the need of, of Houston stopping the Aggies on first down. When you stop them on first down, it puts the Aggies in a position they don't like. This is not a long yardage team. This is a passing situation for just about everybody in America, but this is not a passing quarterback. Well, this could be a possession type pass with five yards needed for a first, third down and five for AM. Oliver and Harris at the top of your screen, three wide receivers. Richardson pursued on the play and is complete to Oliver. First down, AM at the 48 yard line. Did he get a foot down inbounds? Looked to me like he did. The, the Houston bench doesn't seem to think so. Oliver, a terrific receiver, not much speed, but a terrific receiver. Let's see if there's a foot down inbounds. Richardson really pursued on the play by Keith Jenkins. You bet. Oh, ooh, tight. Well, it was close. Yep. But, but the official was right there. But you were right about the controlled pass pattern for Richardson on the roll. First down and 10, ball at the 48-yard line. Back to the run, Darren Lewis. They're going over the right side. That's big Jerry Fontenot and Matt McCall for the Aggies. Norwood and Montgomery on the tackle for Houston. I think the AM theory here by Joe Avizano, the offensive coordinator, used that superior talent to wear the Cougars down. The Cougars do not have a lot of depth on defense. And they don't have size to match the Aggies either. So what the Aggies are doing is they're letting the SS McCall sail at right tackle. Now Fontenot's no baby at 275. <laughs> the guy next to him's got four inches and 20 pounds on him though, McCall. He's That's bigger than Lufkin, his hometown. Richardson on second down, plenty of time. There's going to be a flag around the holding, and it's incomplete. Intended for Lewis at the 36-yard line, but the reason Richardson had so much time was the Aggies were holding on the line of scrimmage. And you know who they were holding, Bill? I believe they were holding Keith Jenkins, who's given him a world of trouble from his left defensive end. All right, let's take a look at Glenn Montgomery on the isolation. This is on Fontenot. That's that's not where the hold is. The hold, there it is. It occurred on 64, yep. Jenkins. But Montgomery did a good job of flushing Richardson out of the pocket. You know, Fontenot is a lot bigger at 270, but Montgomery with a lot more quickness. Tell you what, that's a good matchup, isn't it? Yes, it is. Montgomery, a good, solid, steady defensive tackle. has been one for four years, and Fontenot, a model of consistency at right guard for the Aggies for his career there. Line of scrimmage at the AM 43 yard line. Second down. The Aggies need 15. Just over 13 minutes left to play in the second quarter. Richardson back to Lewis. Oh, what a play again. Alton Montgomery came out, fought off the blocker Simmons, and made the tackle. What a game the sophomore out of Griffin, Georgia, is having. The All American back in this backfield is Johnny Johnson for Houston, number 10. But this kid, Alton Montgomery, takes on the block, takes on the carrier. This has been the star of the game so far for the Houston defense. Third down, 17. AM. Ball back on the AM 41. Again, they flush Richardson out. He's on the scramble, and he gets to midfield before he's knocked out of bounds. They're going to throw a flag on the play on a late hit, I believe, on Houston. But it looked to me like that there was a collision down there, and one of the Cougars hit from behind. Let's see, but this could be a big, big penalty against Houston. I'd be interested in the direction of the penalty because the Houston player did hit late, but he was hit. It is against Houston. It'll give the Aggies a first down. All right, watch it again. Here goes Richardson. There's Burnett chasing him. Burnett, that's a clean hit. 
Now, oh. that's a late hit. Oh, my goodness. And pushed from behind. Oglesby. That's Boy, silly. you don't need that, do you? Silly play by Oglesby, who's a veteran defensive player. He had been bumped, but he'd regained control of himself, and, and he just whacked the quarterback well out of bounds. So a big penalty for the Aggies to keep the drive going. The drive for A&M starts on the 19-yard line. And, Bill, the Aggies are doing what they need to offensively. They're starting to control a little more of the clock. First and 10 from the Houston 34. Lewis looking for some running room. It's just not there. Great pursuit by Craig Vesey. The senior out of Clear Lake, 6'3", 276. He really closed it down from the outside. There's a tendency to think of Houston as some offensive gimmick team, isn't there? Some team that's doing it with mirrors. This is not mirrors on this side of the ball. This is good play. This is good defense, not very deep. Jim Eddy says if we had a lot of injuries, we'd be in big trouble. Second down, the Aggies need 11. Option. Richardson with, oh, what a hit. Boy, did you hear the pads? Robert McDade, all 240 pounds, collided with Lewis at about the 33-yard line, and I'm telling you, it sounded like a collision on the freeway. Wait a minute, they're going to call another penalty on Houston in there, I believe. I think it's going to be offsides on Houston. The flag must have been dropped on the near sideline out of our view, yes. It was the right defensive tackle for Houston who jumped, must have gotten a helmet into the neutral zone as the ball was snapped. That's Oglesby again. Boy, this is, this is not his highlight tape, is it? Second down and six, not right now. Watch the hit on Lewis by McDade. Boom. Remember, McDade was a down lineman when he was at SMU. He's had to lose about 35 or 40 pounds to play middle linebacker. Second down, six for AM. New running back, Horton, into the game, and he makes a good run down to about the 24 yard line. Larry Horton, six foot, 185 pound sophomore out of Tatum. And you know, when you look at the Aggies with Lewis as a sophomore, Horton's a sophomore. Simmons a freshman, Wilson a freshman. McAfee, another terrific looking back we haven't seen. Richardson's a sophomore, Pavlis is a sophomore, Osgood's a junior. Yeah, they ought to be okay next year. And with all of those talented players, with the infantry, Army is coming on the march. Here's the full house wishbone. This really worked against Tech last week. Third and one, that's Ross in motion. Richardson's gonna throw for it, and he's got it to Horton. And it's just across the necessary yardage. Cornelius Price really wasn't fooled on the play, but it was well executed by AM. It was, but what a strange call on third and two feet. You throw for four feet. This is very unlike the Aggie team. Very unlike the Aggie team. Well, they may have thought they could get more, but they got the first down, and that's what counts. This drive, again, started back on the AM 19-yard line. 11.28 left to play. The ball on the Houston 24. The Cougars lead it 6-0, but the Aggies going for points. Richardson throws it into a crowd, incomplete at the 12. Bill, you know what we're seeing here? That third down call and this first down call, as you see Jackson, the All-American defensive back, are really a sign of how much A&M is suddenly respecting the Houston run defense. This time uh, he threw it right in all the red jerseys. Look at that. Jackson, he had to throw it over Jackson. And there was number 21, Cornelius Price, on the hit. Now Gary Oliver will go to the top of your screen. Watch Harris as he lines up on the left. And is three of five for 20 yards. Here's the option. Richardson finds a gap and he gallops inside the 20 to about the Houston 17 yard line. Robert McDade tripped him up. Nice run by Richardson. Gets the ball within about four and a half yards of a first down. But here comes that situation again. Third and fairly long for a running team. That tells you the story. The Astrodome scoreboard. Of course, the big scoreboard has been torn down. Jackie Sherrill 
has watched this drive start on the 19. It's now on the Houston 18. Third down, needing five. Richardson, he's got some running room. First down, A&M inside the 10-yard line. The ball came loose, but Richardson was down. Cornelius Price made the tackle for Houston, but it's goal to go for the Aggies. Bucky Richardson may be a shaky passer, but he is an outstanding runner. He's the size of a running back. Leaping move at the 10-yard line. The ground knocks the ball out. Good call by the official. First and goal egg. They really wanted to pass the baton last year to Lance Pavlis, but it was this young man who came in and got the Aggies to their third Cotton Bowl in a row. He has now carried the ball six times for 40 yards. Here goes Lewis. Right side, he's tripped up at the six. Robert McDade got a hand on him. Big blocks by Fontenot and McCall on the right side. Looks like Richardson took a blow to the right side, doesn't it? He took a hit on that play, no doubt about it. Yep. Shoulder pad hanging out. Those are the stats on Bucky Richardson. Now, keep in mind, this drive by AM started back on the AM 19 yard line, and they really haven't made a mistake. And was kept alive by a Houston late hit penalty after a third down, the Aggies had not gotten the first down. Lewis. Oh. And he stopped at about the one. Johnny Norwood came up from his free safety position along with Reggie Burnett. Lewis had to beat Jackson. He did that at the five. And the ball now will be placed down right on the one-yard line. Watch Jackson come up. Richardson reads it perfectly. What a hard run and what a hard hit here. My goodness. 48 yards on 16 carries for Lewis. Third down and goal to go from the one. This is where Richardson likes to keep the ball. He does. Did he get in? Yes, touchdown, Texas A&M. What a terrific drive by the Aggies. 81 yards for Texas A&M. And Richardson runs it in, and now Slater can give the Aggies a one-point lead. It's up, and it's gone. And with 9.01 left to play in the second quarter from the Astrodome in Houston, the Texas Aggies have followed the infantry into the end zone. 30, and watch the touchdown. Richardson down the line of scrimmage, Norm. Hit. My goodness, that was close at the goal line, him getting in, wasn't it? Yes, it was. And Richardson has come in now to spark the AM offense. 41 yards on seven carries, including this touchdown. Let's see if you can get a better angle from up on high. Warren meets him right there. Yep, he's a step in the end zone. Had his feet in the end zone, and you would have to think the ball at least broke the plane at that point. Touchdown Aggies, wonderful drive. From Broadmoor High in Baton Rouge. Well, screw your helmets on. We've got a good one. The Aggies leading it by one. Again, they're trying to kick it away from Dixon. Weatherspoon fumbles it. He's uh -oh. got a lot of room. Weatherspoon. And he's hard to bring. Look, he's still on his feet at the 35. Chuck Weatherspoon. Oh, my goodness. The world's toughest spoon. <laughs> well, he took a hunk out of the Aggies on that return. Derek Ritchie finally bulldogs him down. I thought for the Aggies, watch Derek Ritchie contain him. That's the first thing he has to do, see? Right there. And now he now Richie will get up and come back. Look at this. Watch Richie. He'll get back in here. There he is. There he is. <laughs> the world's toughest spoon gives Houston good field position. Cougars will have it at the 36. Dixon. Check off. Check off Dacus. It's been a long time since the Cougars have had it. They're going to go for the bomb. They've got Phillips. He's got it. Phillips has run out of bounds at the AM 24-yard line. 
and the Cougars strike back with lightning. The run and shoot, 40 yards from David Dacus to Jason Phillips, the All-American candidate. Well, Jason Phillips right now is on a pace to catch 124 balls this season. That would be the second most in the history of college football. 134 by Twillies, the record. Well, Gary Jones obviously had deep zone responsibilities, Norm, and he didn't get over fast enough. Cougars now on the A&M 24-yard line. Boy, this game is every bit exciting as we thought it would be. Weatherspoon looked like he may have been tripped up in his own backfield by one of his own linemen, Adam Bob, the senior from Lafayette, Louisiana, makes the tackle. I think it was Weatherspoon's left foot tripped Weatherspoon's right foot. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a possibility. <laughs> Kimball Anders will check back into the game for Houston. Anders a terrific receiver. 61 catches for Kimball Anders last year. There's Phillips in motion again. Second down. The Cougars need 11. This is the formation they hit Dixon down the middle in the first half with. There it is again. Touchdown. Houston. procedure on the Cougar. I didn't see that flag until late. They said backs in motion against one of the Cougars. That means moving at the snap. Still second down, second and 15. Let's see if you can see any of the backs move. Oh, too late. What a catch by Dixon, Bill. Well, they have really been working on the freshman from Conroe, Kevin Smith, haven't they? And Dixon that way got away from Smith again for the touch, but it's called back. It'll be second and 16 now for a for a Houston on the AM 30. Blitz, but he's going long. He's got a man, and it's intercepted by Washington at the AM one-yard line. Mickey Washington was all over Brian Williams. So what a turn of events. Just a play ago, the Cougars scored, had it called back, and now on the next play, the Aggies with the interception. If Alton Montgomery has been the defensive star in the secondary for Houston, there is no question Mickey Washington has had a remarkable first half for the Aggies. Look at him play this ball. You can't play it any better than no. that. You're and very right, Bill. A lot of pressure, too. Watch the pressure on Dacus. Here it comes from Alex Morris on the right side. He can't feel it, but until now. But it's good field position for the Houston defense. Now Richardson will have to try to get the Aggies out of the shadow of their own goalposts. Last year in these situations, Richardson would simply keep the ball. Feeling a touch uncomfortable with handing it off or pitching it down here. Richardson kept the ball a lot in these situations. Watch for it here. The Cougar faithful up on their feet, trying to get the defense some support. And off to the up man, Simmons, and he gets to about the two-yard line. Glenn Montgomery made the tackle for Houston. Randy Simmons, the freshman from McKinney. Boy, he's a big one, too. 6'2", 225. By the way, the starting fullback for the Aggies, Matt Gurley, who hurt his knee early in the year in the Nebraska game, re-injured it last week, stepping off a curve, and is maybe done for the season. And he has no redshirt year left. That would be his career. 7.23, and the clock ticking. Lewis. The Cougars were waiting on him, and that was group tackling by V.C. Oglesby and Montgomery. What will the Aggies do here? Isn't this a real question for the Aggies? They're not comfortable throwing the ball anyway. You've got to get out of this hole, though. Maybe the option to the wide side left with Richardson keeping. That's a play they've liked in this situation in the past. Right, but you've got to almost keep it. You don't want to be pitching it around too much down there. Amen. Third down, AM needs eight. High formation. Lewis, left side. No. 
He's tackled at the four-yard line. Alton Montgomery and Lamar Lathan. Lathan, 6'3", 240 pounds. And they said that during the offseason, when they timed him in the 40, he tied Jason Phillips. Is that right? Yes, at 4-4. Four, four. Three runs gained two yards for the Aggies. Now Sean Wilson's got some pressure. Well, he's standing right back there at the end. Now, you got to watch it. You can't step out of that end zone, or that's two points for Houston. Boy, look at the Cougars up on the line of scrimmage. But they're not coming. They've got a good return team. Callaway needs to feel that ball. Oh, and he is gang tackled at midfield. Callaway made two mistakes. Number one, he didn't come up and catch it. Number two, he let it roll and then picked it up too late. Well, he stood 45 yards downfield. That's too far when a guy's punting out of his own end zone. 5.54 left to play in the second quarter. The Cougars will have good field position when we come back. He's leading it by one, seven to six. Well, we'd like to wish our producer Mike and us to see you. A happy birthday. His birthday, Norm, coming up on Monday, October the 10th. He's punching the buttons down in the trunk for us. I don't know how old he's going to be. Bakers hangs in there, and he threw it behind Phillips. We'd also like Mike to know that the only thing he's getting from the announcers for his birthday are those best wishes. <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't given us our per diem yet, has he? <laughs> First down incomplete. It'll bring up second, of course, the ball on the 46-yard line of Houston. There's John Jenkins, the... Young offensive coordinator for Houston. He was with June Jones on the gambler staff, went with Mike Godfrey to Pittsburgh, and then was recruited here by Jack Pardee. Big blitz coming up for the Aggies. Anders, and a good job of staying at home by Alex Morris. Alex Morris and Dana Batiste did a really nice job of hanging out at the line of scrimmage once they'd been blocked. See, the rule there is you bring eight. If you're blocked, you immediately retreat. If you're not blocked, you immediately keep coming. It's a wonderful scheme that R.C. Slocum has devised that so far has done a really nice job of stopping the Houston offense with two field goals. And Dacus read it all right. Normally, that would have been a big game for Houston, but Morris stopped it. Now it's a third down play. The Cougars need 10. Dixon is in motion, comes back towards Dacus. Phillips, look out! Washington with the touchdown saving tackle. You just can't cover Jason Phillips one on one, and that time Dacus got one on one cover. Phil, you want to see a great call though? Watch the, the man in motion come across your backfield and block. See, Dixon is the guy that shut off the blitzer in his face and gave Dacus the time. That was a John Jenkins adjustment to shut off the blocks, and they beat Kevin Smith again. They have been picking on the freshman Kevin Smith Ooh. this entire game. Phillips now with 47 yards on five receptions. Oh, for 109 yards. That one was for 47. Weatherspoon is wrapped up by Big Leon Cole, number 74, and Aaron Wallace. Watch Dixon on the big gainer just a moment ago. Watch Dixon, number 22, come across the backfield in motion and pick up the back. Look at that block. My goodness. That was Brent Smith, number 35, out of Laporte coming from his strong safety position. Kevin Smith beat on the play, and now it's second down and goal to go for Houston from the eight-yard line. 424 left to play. Going to the alley up. And it's incomplete. The referee right there said that Brian Williams caught it out of the end zone. And again, there's number one, Mickey Washington. The referee has the right to rule that were there no, no contact, he would have come down inbounds in the NFL, but not in college football. Well, it's a timing play all the way. Watch it again. Dacus now is 11 of 23 for 229 yards. And, yep, he was out of bounds, no doubt about it will call their second timeout, so they have one left. Eight needed for the touchdown for Houston. Audible by Dacus at the line of scrimmage. 
Draw play. Anders. Great tackle by Gary Jones, number six. Oh, what a tackle by Jones. It looked like all Anders had to do was tiptoe into the end zone. But the youngster from Tyler made great, made a great play. Well conceived draw play. Kimball makes a wonderful cut. He's got one man to beat, and Jones simply won't let it happen. Outstanding tackle by Gary Jones. So it's back to the foot again of hey, Roman Anderson. Hey, Bill, this is a heck of a football game. Oh, it's a dandy. We thought it would be. He'll be putting it down at the 12-yard line. And it's good. Roman Anderson has been perfect, so you can talk about the run and shoot. The Cougars have been shooting their way down inside deep into a &M territory and then firing blanks, but Anderson certainly isn't. He is a perfect three of three today, and the Cougars now lead it nine to seven with 332 left to play in the second quarter. There's Rod Harris, number 17. There's the youngster McAfee, the third team tailback, who's such an outstanding young player. Three thirty two left to play in the second quarter. Mike Adams, the walk on from Pasadena, who won the kicking job just yesterday and is not even wearing his own jersey. Well, he doesn't have one yet. Nice kick. Boy, he gets his toe into this one. And Harris will have to kneel down in the end zone. So young Mike Adams is the story of the game for Tommy Kaiser's specialty team. The bet terminal you, do it again, huh? Bet you by the Tulsa game they'll have an M. Adams shirt. What do you think? I think so. They may be making it right now. Well, now the Aggies have the ball. They have three and a half minutes. They have three timeouts. And Osgood is the quarterback again. I think, think indicating they may want to mix the offense and do a little throwing in the stride. Line of scrimmage at the 20. And Harris with a reception on Jackson, a gain of five. So there are a couple of All-Americans going head-to-head. -head. Harris on Jackson. You know, that's what the Cougars like to do with Jackson, too. If you have an excellent receiver, they will take Jackson and just shadow him the entire game, and that allows the other ten players to move around. Well, when they played Missouri, Missouri has a really good receiver named Ronnie Cameron who caught one ball for three yards all day against Jackson. Draw play, Lewis. Not much. Lamar Lathan, the first one in for Houston, along with Alfred Oglesby. Billy, we're talking about two different sized quarterbacks here, Bucky Richardson and Osgood, and they hand the ball off at different heights. And if you would see that play again, you would see Lewis almost fumble the ball there. Another concern, too, for the Aggies, Osgood and Mike Arthur, the center, have had trouble with that snap. Yes. They had a couple of mix-ups in the Oklahoma State game and a couple of mix-up against Texas Tech, but they recovered those fumbles last week. Third and three for the Aggies. Osgood overthrows his receiver intended for Gary Oliver, overthrown at the 40-yard line, and the Aggies will have to punt. Quite honestly, the Aggies a bit fortunate there because Cornelius Price was downfield, turned, and the ball fell about three yards short of Price, who was folding back defensively, or that would have been an interception. Overthrows are dangerous balls. Sean Wilson will be back on his 12-yard line, and Macedric Calloway at the 32 of Houston. He might get a run back on this one. Gets it at the 35, and he's tripped up. Nice play by the Aggies. That was number 35, Brent Smith, out of LaPorte. Good job by Brent. Boy, is LaPorte turning out some athletes these days. Well, we saw a great quarterback go to Oklahoma State, and one of the wide receivers, much heralded last year, is right here on the Houston team, Ronnie Johnson. Well, in addition, Ron Tequila Collins, that terrific young undefeated fighter from Houston Boxing Association, is out of the fourth, too. 37-yard punt, four-yard return. Well, 
There's two minutes and 29 seconds left in the half. Houston doesn't even have to hurry their offense. That's plenty of time for them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's all day. That's a couple of possessions. <laughs> that's the kind of thing where as, as when this club's clicking, they say, hey, maybe we can get two scores before the half. Just to use it all up in one drive if you can. Dixon. And a couple of times, Dacus looking long again. Dixon, Dixon, he's got it, but he was out of bounds. Dixon beat Brent Smith, and Dacus is arguing that Dixon was pushed out of bounds. But he's going to fall on deaf ears. The Cougars have been striking long a couple of times. Watch it again. Let's see if you think Dixon came down inbounds. Catch, no, had his foot on the sideline. Terrific call by the official. Really was. So far, the Cougars with 229 yards total offense. The Aggies with 157, 223 left to play in the second quarter. Houston leading it 9 to 7. Hand off. Weatherspoon, Weatherspoon. Across the 35 to 36, Gary Jones on the tackle. Boy, when you tackle this young man, you pay. Tell you why that's a terrific call. There's plenty of time for Houston to still move the ball. Right now, they're working on the Aggie clock. Because if they don't get the first down here, the Aggies are now at a minute and 55 and counting. Aggies will have the ball fairly deep in their territory with a minute and a half at the most left in the half. And that's not much for a non-passing team. Aggies up on the line of scrimmage. Dacus needs three. He's got a man across the middle. He overthrows. Brian Williams. Guarded by, guess who? Mickey Washington. I believe I'd quit picking on Mickey. I'd go after somebody else. Mickey looks like he can play. That time, the Aggies came with a blitz. The Cougars did a good job of picking it up. But there was just no one open for Dacus. And Simon Rodriguez will punt again for Houston. Rodriguez has been busy today. The idea here, if you're the Cougars, is listen, the Aggies' biggest threat to score the rest of this half may be that fella right there. I think he's counting that he only has 10 men, is what Rod Harris is saying. Count him up. What do you think? Two, six, eight. I got 12. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. He's got 12 men out there. And you know who it was? It was Brent Smith as he kind of sneaks off the field down yeah, there. Yeah, you can always tell the guy who's not <laughs> supposed to be on. <laughs> so Harris with heads up play. Yes. Although I'm not, do you think the referees would have caught it? Oh yeah, there's one referee in charge of counting on every play. We remind you that this telecast many years ago and now Simon Rodriguez will punt it right inside his 35 yard line. And Harris will be on the receiving end. Another good kick by Rodriguez. Harris will let it go. The Cougars going to try to kill it. Do they do it at the one? No, it's a touchback into the end zone. There you see the Aggies with two and 128 remaining. Now, I'm not so sure the Aggies want a fool. Down I don't here. think they do, but the Cougars may, if they stop them on first now, want to call their final timeout, see if they can force the Aggies to punt. Well, they may call it after second or third down. Mm -hmm. Bill, I think I don't think they want to give the Aggies any more time than the Aggies have left. Here's the running quarterback in the game. Bucky Richardson back at the controls again. He pitches on the option to Lewis. The Cougars have done a good job of reacting. Cornelius Price and Johnny Norwood came up in a hurry. And the ball, the clock continues to run here. It stops at first downs. And when the Aggies snap this ball, there'll be about 55 seconds to go in the first half or so. Under a minute left to play. Richardson wants to throw. It's going to come to Harris. Was he inbounds? Yes. First down, A&M at the 40-yard line. The official started to signal no. Then he signals yes. Watch it again, Rod Harris. Watch the official, Bill. 
Very adept at using that sideline. Oh, he was out of bounds. He was out of bounds. Right in front of the official. He was out of bounds, and the official watching signal no. He yeah. says no. Then he says, oh, wait yes. a minute. Yes. Well, you know why? If that's on the other side of the field with red jersey standing there. <laughs> I think it's incomplete. Now let's see what. No, they're going to say first down. Mm. Boy, now the Aggies can legitimately think about moving the football to field goal position. They've got 50 seconds and two timeouts left. Bucky Richardson. Offside Houston. So a free play for Richardson. Might as well go for the bomb. He does, and it's incomplete. Oh boy, Cornelius Price gambled and it looked like Harris may have come up with it for just a moment at the 15 yard line. Bill, it almost looked like Harris at the end of this play dropped the ball, didn't it? I thought he had it for a moment. Price was going up looking for the interception. The thing you have to do if you're a defensive back in this situation is be sure you knock the ball away first. Yes. Boy, that was a pretty good throw by Richardson, boy, wasn't it, it was Norm? Well thrown. Let's see, does, does Price get any part of it? No, the ball went right in and hit Harris in the chest. Oh, my goodness. My goodness. Houston came close to being in dangerous territory, but the Aggies get five, and the down remains first, and they inch closer to a field goal situation. 44 seconds left. Remember, Slater has great range from 50 yards. Horton. And it's inside Houston territory at the 49. That will be enough for an A&M first down. Larry Horton knocked out of bounds, and now Osgood is running the offense for the Aggies. Before the game, I watched Slater warm up. He was warming up in this direction. Bill, they were putting the ball down at the 43-yard line, and he was clearing by 5 to 10 yards. And the Aggies showing us a little run and shoot of their own. This is a good two-minute drill by AM. Plenty of time, Osgood across the middle, tipped up in the air, incomplete at the 22. Intended for Mike Jones, the big tight end, Norwood was there. He attracted a lot of attention. The Aggies have 33 seconds to go in the half and two timeouts left. Expect the Aggies to come back with something a little more controlled than this, Bill because they're really only one first down away or about 10 yards away from being able to try with Slater. Osgood is four of 10 for 45 yards. They might even be able to run with the timeouts they have left. Second down play, almost intercepted by Reggie Burnett. He read it perfectly. And you know, if Osgood doesn't throw that ball in the ground, that's six points the other way. Well, and Reggie Burnett knows what to do with it. He was a running back <laughs> uh, before he switched to linebacker. In fact, he was a backup to Kimball Anders in the spring, and then they decided to move him older. Now, look out for something here. Look out for them slipping the ball to Simmons and trying to draw against Houston and taking advantage of the aggressiveness of the line of Houston. A&M has made good on six of 13 third downs attempts Osgood gets it away and it's caught good catch by Gary Oliver at the Houston 34 yard line Alton Montgomery wrapped him up and it's going to be enough for another Texas A&M first down they'll call a timeout to move the chains with 18 seconds to play and the Aggies have signaled a timeout here and we'll talk it over now Osgood's going to talk to the folks upstairs Watch Osgood do a good job of scrambling. He's almost brought down on the play. Good rush by VC. Bill, do you know at the press conference this week, Osgood says he'd like to play baseball this spring? He says he's a better catcher than he is a quarterback? Well, I'm sure Mark Johnson will listen to that. Watch the catch by Oliver, though. Oliver really does. You know, wow. Harris gets a lot of credit, Norm. Watch the football as it goes down right there. Hey, that's a fumble. Oh, my. That's Houston's ball. That's Houston's ball. That should have been a Cougar recovery. That same official just called the ball on the sideline with the Houston receiver. Well, we don't know that whether the whistle had been blown on the play or not. That's True. the only thing True. we don't know because we're not down there. 
First down and 10, the Aggies. The ball on the 34-yard line of Houston. 18 seconds to play in the first half. Osgood's going for six. He's oh, he intercepted it. And he threw it over the wrong shoulder. It was intended. Cornelius Price made the interception. It was intended for Shane Garrett, number 80, and he threw it over his wrong shoulder. Bill, rule number one in offense, thou shalt not get greedy. And a and got a little greedy. The receiver never adjusted to the ball at all. Garrett never even seemed to see it. If Garrett goes to try to get it, he might have gotten the completion. And Osgood, if he throws it on the inside shoulder, this is six points A&M. Well, they inside outed Garrett with the zone, and Norwood was late getting Meanwhile, Price gets kicked in the face by his own man. But Bill Garrett did a very poor job of adjusting to the flight of that ball. He should have turned into a defensive back. Jenkins is looking at his watch. I don't know why he's surprised. He's used to four-hour games. So big play by Price. What do the Cougars do with 11 seconds left? Throw it. <laughs> of course. Are you kidding? Of course they'll throw it. <laughs> Maybe not now. Maybe Kimball's back to dot the An option. Well, that certainly didn't fool anybody, especially John Roper, as he was right there to meet Kimball Anders. And that's the end of the first half. Well, we expected a lot of fireworks, but this game is much like the one last year at College Station. The defenses have dominated. But the Cougars have the lead at halftime, 9-7 to seven over A&M. We'll be back. We'll talk to Rudy Davalos of the University of Houston and watch the Houston passing yards. 135 more yards passing. Almost, in fact, it's odd to see the University of Houston with a possession advantage time-wise. Houston has made judicious use of what yardage they've gained. Ah, they fixed Lloyd Dale's mic. Well, they got him a new battery, and it works. The Aggies will be inside the 10-yard line. Jackie Sherrill not pleased with that turn of events, but the Aggies did get some good breaks in the first half. Already today, Texas has lost to Oklahoma 28-13. Arkansas has slaughtered Tech 31-10, and Baylor's making short work of Southwest Texas. They're ahead 38 points in the fourth quarter of this at, at our juncture. Chris Osgood will be the quarterback. Simmons and Darren Lewis in the backfield. Lewis has got a lot of running room at the 10, gets outside 15, and for the first time, the Cougars are not able to contain Lewis as he gets outside. Alton Montgomery finally runs him down just over the 15-yard line. A point you made in the first half we should bring up again, Bill, and that's that the Aggies tend to slam you and slam you and slam you and try to wear you down. It'll be incumbent for the Houston offense to take a little of the heat off their defense by keeping the ball a little bit more this half. Time-wise, grind the clock even more if they can. Lewis, the workhorse. Second down, the Aggies need four. Lewis again. Big hole right side. Breaks into the clear. Across the 30. And a big tackle by Cornelius Price. Or he's long gone. Lewis had nothing but AstroTurf between Price and the end zone. An 18-yard run for Darren Lewis. That was cut back to touchdown here. If Lewis is successful on this final move, he's gone. This one right here. If he manages to elude Price, you can kiss it. Nobody cuts him off. He's got too much speed. First and 10 for AM. Osgood wants a big gainer, and he's got Harris across the 45 to the 46, a gain of 12 on the play. First down A&M, Cornelius Price again defending for Houston. And that same official has had a lot of tough calls. He's had a tough call on the Houston receiver out of bounds. He made a call that Harris was inbounds when it appeared he wasn't, and no call on a fumble. So the A&M drive starting at the nine-yard line all the way out to the 46. Lewis. This time, the Cougars stack it up. Keith Jenkins, number 64. He's down on the bottom of the stack, along with Glenn Montgomery.
Jerry Fontenot, Matt McCall, Mike Arthur, Richmond Webb, Pat Cunningham. Big, big offensive front for the Aggies. Second down. Osgood to Harris. What a timing play by Cornelius Price. He got there just when the ball did. One of the officials started to reach for a flag on this. Started to his hand went back around and he said, no, I think the timing was pretty good here. And it is pretty good. Excellent call. An excellent no call. And an excellent no call by the officials, yes. Third down and nine. There's Harris averaging four catches per game and Price will be the defensive man. And Ramsey in the game, another speed ball replacing the tight end. Down and out, who's got it? And the Aggies do. What a catch by Gary Oliver. Boy, he fought Cornelius Price. They both got to the football at about the same time, but Oliver had his body between Price and the football. Bill, if Gary Oliver played on Houston, he'd be one of the leading receivers in the nation. He's got outstanding moves, good hands, an excellent, excellent feel for the football. All he doesn't have is big speed. This has been an excellent Texas A&M drive. Now inside the Houston 40-yard line. Here comes Lewis, right side. Gets a block from Simmons, but Lamar Lathan comes up from his left linebacking position. He is big, 6'3", 240, and very fast. Runs right at a 4'4", if you can believe it. Boy, you're right about the block from Simmons. Simmons took on Montgomery and knocked him off the line of scrimmage. There you see the stats on Lamar Lathan, who was also an excellent high hurdler at Wharton High School. So he is an outstanding athlete. It'll bring up second down. The Aggies need eight for a first. The ball on the Houston 37-yard line. We played about two and a half minutes. Watch the pass. He's left-handed. Lewis, well covered, and almost an interception by Norwood. Johnny Norwood was right there covering Gary Oliver all the way. Lewis is left-handed, and they will throw the option pass occasionally. And it was a pretty good pass, but the Cougars looked like they'd been in the huddle. Yep. Bill, I'll tell you another guy who's left-handed that I don't think Houston knows is left-handed. Rod Harris is left-handed, the wide receiver, and can throw the ball. Lewis throws this ball pretty well for Oliver, but a nice play. But, ooh, the secondary, and then the ball goes right through the outstretched hands of Oliver. Norwood looked up and found the football. Third down and eight. Big play on the drive. Osgood. Pressure. D.C. Craig Vesey from the right end position, 6'3", 276-pound senior out of Clear Lake, got to Osgood just before he released the ball. Now what do you do? You're at the 37-yard line. It's a 54-yard field goal. That's a possibility. It's a punt. That's a possibility. It's a go for it. That's a possibility. Here comes the punt team, no, but no, realize... Richardson. Yeah, but Richardson's on the punt team. Remember, he does that fake punt stuff a lot. He can punt it. There's VC again on the pressure. That's the first time the Cougars have really been able to get to him. Let's this see. sometimes is a fake just to draw Houston off the line of scrimmage. And the clock ticks off, the 25 second. That's going to be too much time for the Aggies. Dead ball. Delay a game. Offense, fourth down. The Yankees showed that fake with Richardson once this season. Well, he can punt uh, if and, need be. And and now other teams are ready for it a little bit. Now the offense reforms, but is the kicker out there? No. Richardson again at quarterback. Fourth down, 13 at the 42. Now Richardson will drop back in short punt formation and now drop all the way back. Yeah, so he's, he's going to be the punter now. He's a chip shot punter. Little left footer. Beauty. Jackson with a fair. Oh, that's got to be interference on the Aggies, and there come the flags. Well, Felton Ransby was all over Johnny Jackson. Bill, you know what happened? Ransby went down to try to prevent the ball from bouncing in the end zone. He never saw the fair catch signal from the receiver. So Richardson shows you how many looks the Aggies can give you if they want to punt on short possession. Jackson again on the fair catch. Yeah, Ramsby gave him no room at all to make the catch. 
And this now we're going to see, as we listen to Lloyd Dale, we're going to see a new quarterback for Houston. Kicking team. First down. Bill, that's a huge penalty. That's 15 yards. That takes it from the 13 to the 28, and that's a major difference in field position. Andre Ware, the sophomore out of Dickinson, Texas, now at the controls of the Houston offense. Now this guy, unlike Dacus, will run the ball on you. Boy, Morris came like a flash. Fumble. Who's got it? Alex Morris with the football, a and New quarterback, tried to run. Has not been used to the contact of the game, and the Aggies get a big turnover. Bill, was Morris onside? He looked way offside, but your eyes can deceive you on a play like this when a, when a player's got a running start. We won't see it from this angle. Quarterback draw. See, Morris already in the back for you. And the helmet of the Aggie player knocks the ball out, Roper. So Roper making the big tackle. And the Aggies recovering the fumble. Save the side view there, guys, to see if we could determine if Morris were offside. Richardson, flip back to Lewis. Lewis inside the 10. Touchdown, a and And just like that. A 30-yard run by Darren Lewis, puts the Aggies back on top. Boy, did he get some great blocks out on the right side. Fontenot, McCall. And Richardson leading the attack again for the Aggies. That Darren Lewis, number seven in the nation in rushing. And no. just gets better, as most running backs do, the more yeah. you use him. Your screen. Good option. Terrific option. And Lewis just makes one little move there around the defensive back. Price can't catch him. Terrific speed by Lewis. Okay, now watch it again from the Cougar side of the football. He'll be coming right at you. Look at Simmons seal off McDade. Good block right there, and Lewis does the rest himself. This was actually a fairly easy run here. Lewis had to avoid one man because the blocking was just so good. So the turnover by Andre Ware and the Cougars and the Aggies turn it into six points. Osgood. Osgood. It's good. Osgood throws it to Gary Oliver for two points. And the Aggies lead 15 to nine. What a set of hands this kid Oliver has. He has a meat hook that grabs this ball. This is a one-hand stab by Oliver. Well, Osgood waited till the last possible moment. In fact, he really rode the tightrope right here. Look at that catch, that one-hand stab by Oliver. And he beat the All-American candidate, Johnny Jackson, in the end zone. The Aggies lead it now 15 to nine in the third quarter from the dome. Unbeaten and right in the hunt for the Cotton Bowl. And that's James Dixon now sliding over to be the short man. He'll kick it back to Dixon. He'll take it at the one. Dixon, very dangerous, trying to find an alley. Gets around to the right side, look out. And the Aggies with great pursuit at the 11. Texas A&M, Tony Jones out of Houston. Stayed at home. It would have taken Houston nearly three games two years ago to get 42,000 people. Well, now David Dacus is back in at quarterback for Houston. And the Cougars are a long way away, but they can get there in a short amount of time, as evidence you've seen earlier. Dacus not having that sharp a day, as you saw by the stats, 10 of 25. The Aggie defense has had something to do with that. Brent Smith. Brent Smith on the blitz. And the Aggies now beginning to take over with that superior talent. Well, they're taking over on a superior defensive game plan by R.C. Slocum, who's bringing everybody. But see, now 
when you're free, do you see how when the block daggy players back off the line of scrimmage to prevent the short stuff or the draws? Watch. Just picked the wrong man to block, and Anders took one Aggie, but Smith got through. And now it's second down and 17, the ball on the six-yard line. And Dacus has to call a timeout. Now he's at the end of the end zone where all of the a &M supporters are, and it was really hard for him to call his audible. Second down, 17 for Houston. Dacus. Looking long. Going to Phillips, and he had him at the 50-yard line. Phillips outran Kevin Smith at the 50, but the ball was thrown a little too far to the inside. See, if you're the Aggies, you'd love to double-team all these people. You can't. Dacus winds up like an outfielder trying to throw the ball all the way to home plate and just misses Phillips, maybe one step. Boy, he had him wide open, didn't he? Well, Phillips eventually outran the defensive back who seemed to give up on the ball just a little bit, maybe reading the fact that Phillips couldn't get there either. Watch out for that AM blitz on third down. They're going to come after Dacus. Now, Smith is just running onto the field. They only had 10 men out there. Quick pitch. Dixon, 15. 17 yard line, but he doesn't have enough for the first down. Gary Jones ran him out of bounds. James Dixon on the quick pass, and it'll bring up fourth down for Houston. But important for field position, because Houston gets out of the shadow of their own goalpost to where at least AM won't get the ball on Houston's side of the 50, you wouldn't think, unless Rod Harris works his magic. Boy, R.C. Slocum is really talking to Kevin Smith on the sidelines. The Aggies only had 10 men in the game until Smith ran in. And Smith is supposed to cover one of the wide receivers. If he hadn't run in, it would have been a free touch. Simon Rodriguez gets the punt off to Rod Harris at the 35. Oop, That's there a was a clip right there. Boy, there was no doubt about it. Larry Horton with a clip right at the point. Edward Thomas making the tackle. And Rodriguez with a 45-yard punt to get the Cougars out of harm's way. Tell you what, Phil, this is really going to change field position. Here you're going to see Horton, 39. An obvious clip. My goodness, that's textbook clip, Phil. This will put the ball all the way back to about the A&M 21-yard line or so. And it will be a 59-yard change of field position again on the major penalty. Let's go back to that two-point conversion for a moment, Norm. Jackie Sherrill. 15 to 9 now the Aggies. That means that if the Cougars score, and no matter if the Cougars go for two, the Aggies could still win the game with a field goal. Well, the Cougars would obviously go for one to make it 16-15. Right. If the Aggies now can kick a field goal, the lead goes to nine and would put Houston two scores down. So that was worth a timeout for Jackie Sherrill and AM. And understand, you may have been watching this game for a long time, but there's 26 minutes to play yet. Oh, plenty of time. 10.58 left to play here in this period. The Aggie faithful were cheering a moment ago. Now the Cougars are up for their defense. This isn't our timeout, folks. This is the Southwest Conference Radio Network timeout. That's right. It's holding up light. First and 10 A&M, 21-yard line. Aggies lead it 15-9. Richardson trying to audible. Still has plenty of time, but the Aggies look confused. Now Horton comes set. Richardson to Horton, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 22-yard line. There's that four-foot pass again that we saw to Horton in the first half. What they're trying to do there, though, is if Houston gets mixed up on that coverage, that four-foot pass becomes 20 yards as Horton streaks down the sideline. Okay, it'll be Horton and Wilson in the backfield for the Aggies as Lewis takes a rest, or Randy Simmons, I should say. Larry Horton. Pursued from behind, fumble, fumble, and the Cougars have it. No, they blew the whistle on the play. They blew the whistle on the play, blowing it dead before it was snapped. Richardson got a terrible shot. Boy, he is down, isn't oh. he? 
He got up. He rolled around for a while. Bill, he really took a shot on that play. The ball was loose for a moment, but the whistle must have already sounded. Let's get the call from Lloyd Dale. That's an offensive penalty. Dead ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Second down. You know what? This really works in A&M's advantage, though, Norm. Watch the shot Richardson takes here on the backside. Boom! The end really clocked him. My, it does work in their advantage. Of course, Horton sort of gave up when he heard all the whistles, too. Cougars looking for a break right now. The Aggies have had a couple. Boy, did Darren Warren give Bucky Richardson a shot. I'm not so sure that's legal that long after the play. Second and 14. <laughs> on the play, Glenn Montgomery for Houston on the tackle of Darren Lewis, who is having a huge day for AM. What a running back he is. Tell you what, look at how two penalties have changed this game. Remember now the interference against AM that moved the ball out a little. And remember the clip against AM. If Houston can stop here, they'll get the ball back around midfield. Wonder if Richardson will go back to Oliver. He's going to go on the option. The Cougars had that one smelled out all the way. And it'll bring up fourth down AM. Almost a roughing right at the last minute. McDade, Larry McDade pulled off, or Robert McDade pulled off a bit, and that was close to a roughing call. So now Sean Wilson will be back on his two yard line, and he'll be punting to McCedric Calloway, who's back on his own 40. Wilson having a good day in the punting department. Calloway, very explosive. Well, there wasn't anywhere to go. Tony Jones, what a job Jones did getting down under that punt for the Aggies. But, Bill, Houston kicked the ball from their 20 and gets it back at their 45. Good exchange. You're right, a 41-yard punt for Sean Wilson. Hey, anytime you pick up one quarter of the football field in an exchange, that's a major hit for Houston, a major downer for AM. 10:04 left to play in the third quarter. And we've still got another quarter to play. The Reese Davis, of course, with Jack Pardee. Going to throw a little screen out here to Dixon. Ooh. And the Aggies were right there, led by John Roper. Well, you don't fool the senior from Yates. In fact, the Aggies have a lot of Houston connections on their football team. And Roper is one of them. Boy, this is outstanding linebacking by Roper. Anders picks up the blitz man. They try to curl Dixon back in. And that hit will curl something else. Terry Moser was trying to get outside to make a block, but O'Neill Gilbert was able to slip inside of it. And a gain of only one for Houston. Now Dixon will come back. Again, Morris is offsides. This is a free play for Houston. He'll go for all of it. He's got Williams, oh. and it's underthrown by Dacus. He had touchdown all the way. Mickey Washington again defending. But Dacus had Brian Williams wide open. Bill, he, that's about the third or fourth time he's had a downfield bomb receiver open. He just couldn't get him the ball, but it was, as you described it, a free play. Five-yard march off against Alex Morris for being offside. Offside, defense, you know, still second down. Lloyd needs to buy an L from Vanna. Everybody else spells that with two L's. <laughs> I knew you'd think of that somehow. Second down, the Cougars need four. The ball just inside AM territory. 15 9 Aggies. And to Weatherspoon, and he was tripped up at the line of scrimmage. That was probably O'Neill Gilbert, the senior out of Monroe, Louisiana, who got a hand on the sea spoon. And Weatherspoon's just too long to put on the back of his jersey. And if somebody doesn't get an ankle of Weatherspoon, he's around the 40 at least. There was a lane there. For he him. had a big, big bunch of AstroTurf to run on. Now this is a big down for Houston. Third down and two to keep this drive going. The Aggies all up on the line of scrimmage. Hand off. Weatherspoon, he's not going anywhere. The Aggies hold on third down. Brent Smith was the first one in. Boy, they had that play smelled out. Yes, they did. 
and the Aggies continue to shoot men up the middle, realizing Dacus will not roll and beat them by running around the flanks. Again, the rule on the shotgun is the same on the run and shoot. Blitz it up the middle. Unless you've got a quarterback like Randall Cunningham of the Eagles who will run hard to the outside on you. Well, the Aggies have gambled, and they've only been burned a few times. They figured they would be, but it's paid off more for A&M. Rod Rodriguez Good with kick. a dandy punt to the corner, and does he get it? Yes, at the two-yard line. Rodriguez nails it at the one, a little inside the two. What a punt by Simon Rodriguez. 46-yard punt by Simon Rodriguez. He was a walk-on a couple of seasons ago. Who's going to quarterback it? Down here, they'd probably be more comfortable with Bucky Richardson. And that's uh, who it's going to be. We remind you that uh, at the two-yard line, first and ten, Lewis and Simmons in the backfield for Richardson. Simmons to the four. 7.55 left to play in the quarter. Glenn Montgomery, Robert McDade on the tackle for Houston. Simmons looks like he's shaken up a little bit. Yeah, he got a little bunged up there. He missed 87 with a knee injury. This is the guy that's got the earring collection. Randy Simmons, he's got 25 earrings. Jim Helms, the backfield coach. He signals the plays in. When they don't shuffle people, they'll signal them in with Jim Helms. Boy, he was a great running back, wasn't he? Oh, my. My, yes. For Darrell Roy. Second down and eight. Lewis gets across the five. Is that a flag on top of the pile? I think it is. Yes. Probably a hold in there. You would think that'd be a hold in there if it's a flag. But it can be face mask. Remember that. And it, it can be hand to the head also. It'll be holding against A&M. Bill, what do you do here? They only got a yard or two. It would be third and five or five and a half and this penalty is really only a penalty of two and a half yards all right watch Glenn Montgomery on your left side oh yes oh yes <laughs> yeah I'll tell you what Fontenot got a handful didn't he they did decline it so it'll bring up third down and this gives the Aggies a little room to operate on play action possibly or will they go to their bread and butter, Darren Lewis? Those are the penalties on the game. The Aggies need five for a first. Lewis and the Cougars stop him inside the 10. Well, the Cougars gambled that they could play one running play for a stop, and they did it. The force man again was Montgomery, an outstanding force, and the Aggies have got a punt with Wilson standing in his own end zone again. Well, Jackie Sherrill sweating it out. If he gets number one, number 100, it's going to be a tough one today. And John Wilson from his end zone, his sixth punt of the game. 6.31 left to play in the third period. Wilson, low kick. Callaway tries to field it on the run. He leaves it behind him. The ball is loose. Who's got it? Aggies, I believe. Texas A&M. Well, earlier in the game, I said that Callaway may have been remiss in not fielding a punt that was short. This time, he tried to field it. It was one of those twisting punts going down, Norm, and he couldn't hold on to it. Boy, the Aggies have been presented a lot of nice gifts from the Cougars so far in this game and have made them pay. John Cooper was there for A&M. This ball ducks low right on him. Callaway just muffs it. Ball out to the 45. Richardson's going to go for six. Going for the bomb to Harris. Overthrown, and Johnny Jackson was right with him. A couple Aggies. of All-Americans. Aggies loading up, going for everything. Well, why not? Trying to break the game open. Sometimes, you know, that defense runs to the sideline thinking that it's going to get a little rest and then has to come back out on the field again and that's a good time to strike. Well the Aggies hustling to the line of scrimmage going to call another play very quickly here. Shane Garrett and Gary Oliver in the game wide outs for the Aggies. 
Second and ten. Option play. Richardson's going to keep. First down. AM ran the option, and Houston had a play where Burnett, the linebacker, shot and took the pitch man. Richardson did a terrific job. Watch 88. Burnett shoot through your screen, taking Lewis. See it? Richardson read it and read it beautifully. And then Matt McCall got a good block for AM to get Richardson around the corner. Well, he didn't get the first down. It's going to be third and one. He only needs about a half yard. And at Wilson across the right side behind Fontenot and McCall. Montgomery and Jenkins for Houston on the stop, but an AM first down this time. Big Robert Wilson, 6'1, 235, another Houston product out of Worthing. And the clock continues to run, and the Aggies now. It's off that clock. Well, the most important for Houston was the fact that they lost that valuable field position. They would have had that ball at midfield had they been able to feel that punt. First and 10. Lewis stopped at the 43. In fact, Bill had, oh, and there's a flag very, very late. This may be offsetting. It seemed to be that some people were pushing after the play was called. What are they going to call it? They're going to call it against Houston. Well, it looks like the Cougars beginning to lose their poise a little bit. Lathan, number 46. Oh. Not smart. Put a foot right on the throat of Matt McCall, and yes, that's worthy of 15 yards. That's the second incredibly not smart play we've seen by a player. And Pardee may be saying that in a little more... Did they kick him out of the game? Pointed terms. No, I think Pardee took him out of the game so he could yell at him for a minute or so. Well, that's also the defensive coordinator over there. Jim Eddy was talking to him. Richardson wants to throw. He'll keep it instead. And he's run out of bounds at about the 22-yard line by Johnny Jackson. Richardson wants to know what's the matter. What the matter was, was when he ran it around, bounce, he flipped the ball into the stomach of the Houston defender who flipped it back. All right, the stats again. The Aggies now leading in the statistical department, as you see on the scoreboard, 308 total yards for Jackie Sherrill's troops. The Cougars have not been able to do anything offensively since midway through the second period. 519 left to play in the third. Houston averages 24 first downs per game. They've got five so far this afternoon. Richardson, stat 21 by Glenn Montgomery again, who was submarining in. Montgomery has played one whale of a game for Houston. Watch. He's only short, of course, at six feet, but at 265, he just burrows inside. Ooh. This sets up a big play for the Houston defense. You don't want to give up the, sure don't want to give up the touchdown in this situation. Uh, you want to make Slater try for three. It's about three and a half yards. The Aggies have six seconds to snap the ball. 441 left in the period. Third down. The Aggies need a massive collision at the five. What a catch by Mike Jones. Oh my. Jones caught in a human sandwich, but what a catch by Jones. Look at the big junior out of Sacramento. Hold on. To, how does he hold on to this football? Norwood gets him right there. Jackson gets him from the other side, and Lathan falls on top of him. Look at this hit. Oh. Oh. You know, Bill, the way he was hit, I don't think he could have fumbled the ball. The hit <laughs> drove the ball right into his chest. If anything, they're going to have to surgically remove the football. Aggies from the six. Lewis bounces off to the one. What a run by Lewis. Almost like a pinball. What you have to do with Lewis, of course, is when you hit him, you got to wrap him up. Got to wrap those legs up. I You're think right. he fumbled that ball, too, at about the one. It looks like one of the Aggie offensive linemen got up with the football. 
and Lewis will come off the field. So now they're going to go with their tight ends. Remember now, just two minutes ago, the Aggies were punting. Watch it again. Yes, he fumbles the ball. That ball was loose. Bill, you're right. Second down. Goal to go from the two. No. Well, there's that. Again, signaling touchdown. Nobody else on the field said anything. He got a touchdown. That's the same gentleman from the side who's been making the calls on the sideline. And they signal touch. Well, I think he's the only one that had a look at it. Well, let's, let's watch see. it. Bill wasn't. Oh, well. No, but he didn't have the football, Norm. He's not there yet. Oh, that's a terrible call. He, he reached out but was bobbling the ball as it broke the plane. Also, somewhere in there, and down. Who is that? He's having a terrible game to, today. Well, all I know is that all the other officials had not signaled a thing, and now they're going to go for two, 21-9, and Osgood has to call another timeout. So the only two timeouts called by the Aggies in this period have been on extra point attempts. But the other one worked. Joe Avizano, the offensive coordinator, right next to Jackie Sherrill. Let's watch the touchdown again. I just don't think he scored, but we'll see again. He's hit well short. Now he's down right there. But he doesn't have possession when he pushed the ball across the goal. Yeah, he was bobbling, and it was bobbling just a bit. Now you're going to see it from the field level again. Horton up, hit. He's down right here. Down there. Now he reaches, but he doesn't have the football. Well... That's a little debatable, but and still he should have been down. The, the other man is pointing that he was down back at the one-yard line. See the official that he was down at the one, right? Yes, and that that should take precedence over the man reaching into the end zone. If you've said the play was over, that man can reach the end zone, he can fumble in the end zone, he can do anything, and the play should be over. Doesn't make any difference now. It's six points for AM. They're going for two more. Roll out play again right like they did last time. Yep. Osgood. What a catch by Larry Horton. Now remember on a two-point conversion, you can take it the other way for points. And yep. Jackson almost got the interception. Boy, Jackson. just a few, just a matter of inches on this play. Watch Jackson go for the interception. In fact, Bill, I believe he overshoots this ball just a touch. Watch. There's no. My goodness, what a catch by Horton. Well, the Aggies have had the bounces going their way, and they are in control right now as we play deep into the third period at the Astrodome, and the Aggies with a 16-point third quarter. Weatherspoon. Gets the football, and he gets it to about the 29-yard line. Now, if I'm Weatherspoon, I've got to let that ball go through to Dixon. Well, Cougars making just little mistakes here and there that are really costing them the bit. I'm not sure he knew Dixon was right back there to get the ball also. Sometimes you'll let it bounce, and the guy has assumed you're going to take it, and has started up the block for you. There's Robert Newhouse on the right. Along with Mike Edmonds, they do the games for the University of Houston radio. Wait a Newhouse, minute. one of the great runners. Why are they get a good-looking blonde to spot, to spot for them? And we get Phil Malios. <laughs> That's not a very good trade-off, is it? Bacus underthrows Phillips at the 30-yard line. Bacus got his shoulder hit as he delivered that football. And Dacus... Has got a lot of yards, but not a good percentage. The Aggies have done a good job of cutting off those little short routes. Well, Billy, they've rushed Dacus in his face so much, he's had to turn to the outside. Notice they've hit almost nothing over the middle against the Aggies. 310 left to play in the third quarter. Second down, Houston. Blitz, AM, and they got him. 
at the 24-yard line. John Roper came in there very hard along with Aaron Wallace. But Roper was the first one, and the Blitz brothers are back in operation for the Aggies. Early on, Roper didn't have much of a start, but he certainly is having a couple of weeks in a row. Realize what the A&M defense has had to contend with. All-American Tommy Hodson from LSU. All-American Steve Taylor, Nebraska. Terrific Mike Gundy, Oklahoma State. Billy Joe Tolliver, and now the run and shoot. My goodness. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a pretty good list. Don't forget Sanders at Oklahoma State either. They're going to go for the bomb. Dacus and Washington has Brian Williams covered very well this time. And uh, three downs and punt again for Houston. The Aggie defense rising to the occasion. At this point of the day, and realizing there's 17 minutes to go, my game ball for this game, if it stays like this, goes to R.C. Slocum. What a job of coordinating the defense against the run and shoot. Bob Harris standing back inside his 40. Rodriguez has had an excellent punting day for Houston. This time he doesn't get a real good one off. Line drive. Harris looking for some room. Bounce back again to the 35. He's got the lane. And you can see how it Harris is as he gets back to midfield. Kevin Tuggle made the tackle for Houston. Harris must have run about 25 yards that time to gain 10. Well, he doesn't give up on the ball. See, there doesn't look like there's anything there. He gets a shot from his own man, Horton, that knocks him back five yards. He gets a good block there on the side. Nice play. Evades a man there. Oh, that's a nice run from yep. a guy who wouldn't fit. He wouldn't look. This isn't a clip. He hits him on the side here. 38-yard punt and a 12-yard return. And Rod Harris, they really missed Harris, too. When Lewis and Harris were out of the Aggie offense after the Nebraska game, they really suffered at LSU. The Tigers were able to shut them out. Tell you what, Bill, it's come to the point where Houston says to itself, we can't give up any more points in this game and still win it. Osgood, incomplete. It really surprises me that the Aggies will continue to throw here with just 17 minutes to go in the game, a couple of first downs running would really put the squeeze on Houston time-wise in this game. Well, the theory by a &M may be get as many points ahead as you can. Well, Jim Eddy, the defensive coordinator, looking on for Houston. They need a first down to get Slater into field goal range. Ooh, Osgood bobbled. almost bobbled it and tackled in the backfield. Nice play by Lamar Lathan. He was coming through on a blitz. And he almost got there the same time Osgood handed the ball off to Lewis. Cramp. Cornelius Place has a cramp in his in his right calf. He was just standing there and all of a sudden started hopping around. And this is a cramp. This is nothing but a cramp. AM needs 14. The ball on the 46-yard line. 135 left to play in the third quarter. So far, it's been all AM. Osgood going long. And it's intercepted by Houston. The flag will be for offensive interference. Derek Price with an excellent job of defense, and the Cougars will get the football right there. Derek Price did a very good job here. Osgood tries to airmail the bomb, but Price had played way, way off the receiver, who in this case was Shane Garrett, I believe, and Garrett just runs up the back of Price. Offensive interference, Cougars get the ball, but that's, tell you what, that's better than a punt. In their own 30, their own 30, their own one, their own three, their own six. A lot of possessions, you know, Houston scores a lot, and A&M has done a good job of three downs and punt, haven't they? In three of Houston's 12 possessions, have they run more than three plays? My goodness. Houston has kept the ball for four plays, six plays, and seven plays. That's the maximum number of plays they've kept it today, seven in any one drive. What an outstanding defensive scheme 
by Slocum. And here it is again. Nine men on the line of scrimmage for AM. Second down and ten. Dacus. And he's sacked. Roper. Roper wraps him up at about the one. John Roper, the senior out of Yates. 6'2, 225 pounds. And he's everybody's candidate for postseason honors. Roper had no sacks going to last week's game against Texas Tech. Well, I wonder something. Why is this being marked? Oh, I see. Now they marked it back at the five. Good call. The official did rule that Dacus had been wrapped up at the five, and they put it back up there. Good call by the official. Third down. The Cougars need 18. Boy, you know the Aggies are going to come and get them now. Quick pass to Phillips. And he drops it inside the 10. And the Cougars will have to punt again after running only three plays. Listen to the Aggies applaud their defense. Tenth time out of 13 Houston possessions that they kept it three plays or less. And now Harris is going to get a chance. Here's a look at the Butkus Award candidate this year, John Roper. They also put him in there for the Lombardi. Simon Rodriguez. And this will be returned by Harris. Going to go north and south. Trying to get outside. Fumble! Houston gets the football. So the Cougars get a break, but there's a flag. Back on the 43. We'll wait and see. Good job by John Gaston for Houston. The Houston offense is coming on the field apparently thinking this is an offensive uh, clip. It is. And Bill, just, just when you felt Houston was passing out of this game, life for the Cougars. Well, if Harris holds on to this football, the Aggies have a chance to get six more. But he fumbles it, and the Cougars now. He just did not protect the football. And boy, in this instance, this is when you really need to protect it. The Aggies could have put the game away. Now the Cougars, with 21 seconds left in the third quarter, have the football at their own 40-yard line. Very careless play by Rod Harris. Very careless play. Dacus has completed only three of his last 15. Dropped. And it's dropped. Well, that wasn't Dacus' fault. Kevin he, Mason. Yeah, he put that ball right in Mason's hands, and he dropped it. Mason, a junior out of Houston, 6'2", 155. Had caught seven passes coming into tonight's game. And, Bill, the player that's truly been silent in this game so far is Kimball Anders, who has the one long pass, but otherwise not much. Jeroy Robinson comes in for the Aggies. Aaron Wallace goes out on defense. Second down for Houston. Blitz again by Brent Smith. The Aggies are just chewing up the Houston offense. You know, John Jenkins says, ideally, I'd like to have four seconds to throw the football. The Aggies aren't even giving Dacus four seconds. Maybe two, two and a half. Maybe two, two and a half is exactly right. Smith, who's jumping all over the place, comes from the right side there. Well, and Houston needs 17. Dacus. Too much time. Again, it's Brent Smith. And Smith has spent more time in the Cougar backfield than he has in his own. Bill, this isn't the fault of the protection. Dacus had time to look it over there. What happened there was the Aggie defensive secondary did a really good job of blanketing the three men out on a pattern. And Smith eventually simply got to Dacus. Houston may be having to hold a few more people in to block against that blitz. Not quite as many receivers. Simon Another Rodriguez good. has just had an absolutely great day today. Inside the 20 for Harris. He's not going anywhere. But he is protecting the football. I think he got a stern lecture on his last trip to the sidelines. Andy Sexton, one of the Terminators for Tommy Kaiser's special teams for Houston makes the tackle another excellent punt 
Simon Rodriguez, 48 yards. Offense in the third quarter. Minus nine yards for Houston. Well, there is still a lot of time for that run and shoot for Houston, but the defense has got to stop the Aggies right here. AM going for its fourth Southwest Conference Championship, although they can't go to the Cotton Bowl. They'd like to determine who does. Well, what they'd like to do is put seven L's on the other teams in this league and let them fight it out. Which could mean a year that a team with two losses could go to the Cotton Bowl very easily. A&M. And off in the middle. And now you see the Aggies with the two tight end offense. Robert McDade on the tackle for Houston. Brian Ross, Wally Hartley. And it looks like they're going to turn and hand it to number 25, and that's not a bad decision. It sure is hard, though, when you're Lewis. This is an easy yardage. Quacked, pushed back, doubled over. Oh, thank heavens he didn't get that left leg extended. Hurt. Richardson comes down the line of scrimmage. Keith Jenkins made a great decision that time. He had the good position. He forced Richardson inside and then made the tackle for Houston. Boy, Jenkins, Montgomery, Oglesby, and VC, along with McDade and Lathan, have to be getting a little tired. That defense has been on the field an awfully long time for Houston. Third and seven. Ball on the 28-yard line. Richardson wants to throw, big rush. And he throws it out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. So good pressure by the Houston defense intended for Rod Harris. Good job by Bucky Richardson, who realized as that play was about half through, hey, the only thing I can do here is screw this play up royally. I'm getting rid of this thing. You really have to keep an eye, too. When you throw it to Harris, you know Jackson has to be somewhere around. And remember last year against Texas, he had... Those three interceptions for runbacks for touchdowns, so you've always got to be aware of number 10. Sean Wilson at his 15. Great punt for Wilson. Going to drive Callaway all back, the way back to the 21. Cedric Callaway and the AM special teams unit does its job. Tony Jones has been everywhere. That was a 50 yard punt. For Sean Wilson, and Tony Jones has been the first man down on just about every punt for the Aggies. Well, neither special teams coach has anything to be ashamed of today in the way of coverage, and the punters, Rodriguez and Wilson, have been dynamite. They really have. The special teams play has been excellent. Oh, Dacus with a terrible pass. Well, he just short-armed that. Well, when your recent experience has been 500 pound gorillas smashing you as you deliver the ball. Sometimes just delivering the ball becomes a chore. And AM has been all over Dacus. Well, he hasn't, in his last five attempts, he is 0 for 5. Also, in those last five attempts, he's been sacked three times. So the Aggies have not been kind to David Dacus in the second half of this game. Second down and 10. Good play, good call. All play, gonna go for lots of yardage. Weatherspoon, Weatherspoon. Great move there. What is going? Weatherspoon fumbles the ball. It's taken away by Smith for the Aggies. Weatherspoon had it taken away by Kevin Smith. And it'll be AM's ball at their own 21 yard line. Unless the officials rule that Weatherspoon was down. Nope. Nope, the Aggies are going to get it. Houston had made the play to get him right back in the game. Weatherspoon had gone 70 yards, and he was trying to get it all the way to the end zone and fumble the football. 70-yard run by Chuck Weatherspoon. Trying to get one more yard. Watch it again. The Aggies coming on the blitz. Oh, boy, he had just nothing but astroturf. And Billy makes a terrific move here. Watch this move to get himself more. Right here as he cuts back outside. Terrific move. That's going to buy him another 10, 15 yards. 
But in here, now he's he's up for grabs right here. And the ball's did that ball bounce? Kevin Smith took it away. Smith had tried that earlier in the game on Dixon and couldn't get it away from him. So the Aggies with a big turnover. The Aggies have had everything going their way tonight. Fumble in the air, and Richardson's going to turn it into a gain across the 25 to the 26-yard line. Reggie Burnett may have saved a long run. That's if he doesn't make the tackle, Richardson's gone. That's at least four Aggie fumbles they've gotten back today. Look at this athletic move, and there's just a hole at left guard. So Richardson says, fine, thank you very much. I'll pick up seven on a busted play. Well, you don't have to tell Chuck Weatherspoon about it. He feels Darren Lewis just did it on his own. One of the most recruited running backs out of Dallas two years ago, and he shows you why. Bill Houston in this game has had three plays of more than 50 yards and hasn't scored a touchdown. And if you're an Aggie offensive lineman, you keep blocking all the time. Well, there. Kevin Smith has been burned quite a few times in this game, but he also made up for it on that recovery. And he stripped the ball away. Lewis brought down from the backside by Glenn Montgomery. That yeah. Cougar defense has to be exhausted. There's a flag on this play. It's going to be against A&M. It's a hold. Now, if you're the Aggies, you start to work on the clock. 11:43, two touchdowns. It'll still be first down. You can run three plays and get this clock under 10 before you give it back. Still first down. Again, it's Montgomery. That is uh, A&M offensive lineman Bill Cavanaugh, 58 in white. And Montgomery was held and still made the play. My goodness. Cavanaugh and Keith Alex in on the right side of the Aggie line right now. First down, 20 to go for A&M. Richardson, option to Lewis. Oh, what Jackson. <laughs> Jackson and Lewis. Oh. Oh. Bill? If that's your car and my car, that's $7,000 worth of damage. Nope, mine's so old you can't hurt it. <laughs> Look at this collision by Jackson and Lewis. Oh. Jackson at 195, Lewis at 210. Boy, it's those guys that hit you hardest, though. Those little whippets who can get up a little speed. High formation, Larry Horton gets a hole. Horton is tripped up at the 40-yard line by Johnny Norwood, and Norwood may have saved a touchdown gallop. But, Bill, what's happening here is the Aggies are grinding the clock. Now there's 10.55 to go, and time is their biggest ally right now, time and that incredible defense. And they're starting to wear Houston down, no doubt about it. Cunningham at 285, Richmond Webb at 280. Arthur is the smallest offensive lineman, the center at 260. Cavanaugh at 265, McCall at 295, and they're grinding away. And now Richardson will pass, intended for Rod Harris, covered by Jackson. Well, Houston gets what they need. They get the clock stopped and they get the ball back. But Houston, my goodness, not to lay it all on young Weatherspoon's shoulders, but there was the play that could have turned the game back into a truly interesting last 10 minutes. Well, the Cougars have presented the Aggies with a lot of gifts tonight. Norm certainly have. But you know, you've got to have a little bit of luck when yes. you win. Well. Callaway will fair catch it at the 20. And now there is 10-22 left to play in this game. And the Cougars need a couple of scores, trailing at 23 tonight with plenty of time, but now the Aggies with a lot of defensive people in there. Dixon can't get it. The coverage out there by Derek Ritchie. Now, Norm, the Aggies have in the game eight defensive backs. Watch. Now, watch Roper. He'll line up over the center. It's a linebacker that's gone to nose tackle. 
So really what they're doing with Roper and Basil Jackson, they're keeping Adam Bob, Jackson, and Roper in their linebackers, and the other eight are basically defensive backs. Bill, Bill, they don't have a defensive lineman on the field. That's what I mean. They've got linebackers and defensive backs playing the down line spots. That's right. And they're coming with a blitz. Oh. And he had Dixon at about the 32, but Dacus overthrew him. Oh, that could have burned the Aggies because Dixon had run that little slant over the middle that burned them in the first half, but Dacus just missed it. Well, they might have been burned, but the key word is might. Might. And if. And the Aggie defense has kept him guessing, and that's what they wanted to do. Dacus now five for his last 24. And now you say, well, why didn't, why don't you go to the other quarterback, the sophomore Andre Ware? Well, Ware came in for one play and fumbled. Mm-hmm. 10-10 remaining in the fourth. Third down, big play for Houston, and he overthrows his man, Jason Phillips. Five for his last 25, and with 10 minutes to go, and the Aggies about to get the ball back, it's reached desperation stage for the Cougars. John Jenkins and Jack Pardee talking it over. Simon Rodriguez will be back at his own five-yard line to punt again. There he is. Sensational game for Rodriguez. Another booming punt for Simon Rodriguez and Rod Harris Look at is that wrapped play. up. Kevin Tuggle, senior out of Austin. Of for 15 yards. If you read that somewhere around the country today, you wouldn't believe it. You'd think it was a typo. He's now to go back to the old bread and butter. In your mouth type football. Yep. Options, slams. Keep the clock running. That's the story of this game now. Well, now Texas A&M gamble they could get on top with that running game mm -hmm. and win with the better athletes, and that certainly has worked out. I wouldn't want to be any teams in the next few weeks getting fed to this Aggie defense. They're in pretty high gear right now. So far, Richardson has come off the bench to rush for 67 yards, a touchdown, and 14 carries. Well, Lewis looked up and saw Lamar Lathan, and I think that was a good idea. How many <laughs> carries does Lewis have now? 33 carries for Darren Lewis. Bill, that's got to be approaching some kind of Aggie record. Give me a minute with the book here, all right? 125 yards for Lewis. So that's his third game in a row of 100 plus yards. Third down and 10. 851 clock running. Osgood will be the quarterback for AM. Trying to scramble out and he can't get outside. Darren Warren. Just got a hand on him and tripped him up at the 35-yard line. It'll force a to punt. Would you believe that two years ago, Roger Vick rushed the ball 41 times in a game against Texas? Mm -hmm. Watch the coverage by Cornelius Price on Rod Harris, and then he's getting help from Norwood. So double coverage. Osgood had nowhere to throw the ball. Yep. But the clock runs, and there'll be less than eight minutes to go when Houston gets the ball back. Sean Wilson my golly driving Macedric Callaway back to the 17 yard line Callaway trying to get a block good defense by a &M. special teams had every lane covered the punting in this game has just been terrific John Cooper on the tackle a 48 yard punt by Sean Wilson that's, Other than if AM gives it back to you. That's the score on the left. Time remaining in the game. And Andre Ware, the new quarterback for Houston. He's barking out some instructions in that huddle, trying to take charge. He came in last year when Dacus got off to a shaky start against Oklahoma State to open the season last year. Then Ware came on and was going great guns until he had a shoulder dislocated. Ball play, and it gets a couple. 
Well, I go back to a couple of possessions ago. Roper on the tackle for the Aggies along with Alex Morris. I go back a couple of possessions ago, though, when Weathers 70, if he protects the football and the Cougars get in on that possession. Would have been an interesting game right now. Well, what was it Don Meredith used to say? If ifs and buts were candies and nuts, we'd all have a wonderful Christmas. <laughs> 725 now left to play. Where? There's. That play has been there quite a bit. But finally, Ware is able to get the ball to Phillips. And it's a Houston first down. They just do a little kind of square out screen, don't they? Yep. It's a little X. And the ball's thrown to the slot. Realize this team has two different receivers coaches. Carl Hargrave coaches the outside. Receivers and former Arkansas quarterback Ron Calcagni coaches the slots. It's because they have so many receivers. That's right. That's Dixon in motion. Where overthrows his intended receiver Paul Smith at about the AM 35 yard line. And right now the Aggies are playing in there with Alex Morris, Derek Ritchie, Gary Jones, Brent Smith, Kevin Smith, and Mickey Washington. At seven defensive back. They've got Adam Bob, John Roper, Dana Batiste, and Terry Price along with Aaron Wallace. Is that right? Six, six defensive backs or seven? Seven defensive backs, and they just took Price off the field, didn't they? Yep, Price off the field. So there's seven defensive backs and four linebackers. Don't see that defense much anymore, Bill. Second down and ten. Draw play, Weatherspoon. And again, he's just impossible to bring down, isn't he? He's really something. Reminds you so much of Newhouse. Paul Gibson was another great running back back in Bill Yeoman's days. Dickie Post. R.C. Slocum. Now, there's the game ball right there. Yep. What a scheme he's devised. Deciding to, to take his ultra quickest players and try to pressure Houston. Weatherspoon got out of bounds. The clock is stopped at 7.04. Third down. The Cougars need two to keep this drive going. Well, this is four down territory for Houston. Mm -hmm. Dixon, nice play. He kept on his feet. To get across the 45, he's got the first down at the 47. That'll stop the clock momentarily while they move the chains. Well, Bill, from here on out, and the ball getting to midfield, everything is four down territory right. now. There'll be no more Houston punts in this game. Cougars need 14 points to tie, and of course they'll go for two if they could get it in. 6.50 remaining to play. Well, it looked like that Phillips fell down. Brian Williams cut right in front of him. There were two receivers right there at the same spot. <laughs> this is the doggondest offense. Adam, Adam Bob, watch Phillips now as he falls down. And where does Williams come from? I think he was throwing for Phillips. Who knows? It's hard to tell, but anyway, got the completion, a gain of seven. Let's make it six. It'll be second down, four needed. Chris Lewis in the game now for the Cougars. Where? Oh. Oh. Boy, wow. Dixon had it hit him right in the letters, bounced away. Kevin Smith was all over him. That stops the clock with 6.03 remaining to play. Aggies lead it 23 to 9. Let's watch that unique Aggie defense we've talked about before. Where in the eye of the storm? Here comes Smith again. Oh! Mm. And a blow delivered with the helmet up high. That could have got a flag. That could have been a flag. Third down for Houston. Cougars need five. Offside. Where got the play off anyway. Phillips, he got the first down at the 41-yard line. Dana Batiste made the tackle for the Aggies. My goodness. Am I imagining things? Alex Morris is in the Cougar backfield when that ball was snapped. Bill, again, let's see if we have a replay on that play. Watch the top of the screen. No, you're not going to see it from here. 
No, apparently not. He just timed it I right. I saw his feet. Yeah, he yeah. just timed it right. It's almost as if he knew the snap count. Yep. And a terrific job by Ware. And then Dixon hooking up, and it's a first down. 538 left to play. Draw. Draw play. Weatherspoon inside the AM 40 to about the 37 yard line. Adam Bob, senior out of Lafayette, on the tackle. A gain of five. Weatherspoon now has gained 94 yards on 10 carries. 70 of the 94 came on that long draw play earlier in this quarter. Here's Trips right. Here's the formation they sprung a man down the middle from. But now the Yankees have a deep safety to cover. Second down, Houston. There he is, down the middle again. Phillips at the 10. First down, Houston. First and goal from the AM 10 yard line with five minutes left to play in the game. Boy, Norm, you call that one right on. Bill, that's the third time they've gone trips right to Dixon straight down the middle, and the Aggies still haven't stopped this play. Dixon at the 10. Oh, what a hit by Jones. Dixon has seven receptions. For 116 yards, where Jet Brown, and he's carried out of bounds at the one-yard line. That does a couple of things for Houston. That stops the clock at 446, hey, and Bill. it puts the Cougars within a yard of a touchdown. Hey, Bill, this, this could be an interesting football game still if they can get the ball in here. Well, you're not kidding. There's still plenty of time left now, but the Cougars, I think, have to get the ball in in a hurry. Again, Houston has two timeouts still to go in this game. I think Houston can get a first down without scoring. It looks like that they may have marked that ball outside the 10 a moment ago, so it'll be second down. Give it a Weatherspoon. Weatherspoon carries down to about the one, and they're going to call a timeout. To measure. 438. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, see, what Houston should have done there is ask for a measurement, maybe. Uh, well, they, they wouldn't have gotten it. I don't think the ball is close enough. Jet Brown's in motion. Where? He's going to bounce out. He gets a touchdown. Andre Ware was caught five yards in the backfield. I think the Aggies were offside. There's a flag on the play. And let's see if the touchdown stands. What a job by Andre Ware. Touchdown, Houston. 4.33 left to play. Now you go for one. You definitely go for one here because you, you don't want to miss this and deflate your defense. You go for one, you go for the two the next time to win it. Ware, see how he's caught in the backfield by Brent Smith? And then, then Morris. He, yeah, then bounces off Morris. What a great job by Ware. What a terrific, maybe the best one-yard run of the season by Houston. Big extra point by Roman Anderson. Got it. Well, hang on. We've got us a football game still here with four minutes, 33 seconds left to play, and the Cougars now trail the Aggies by seven. And if you're thinking about another score, eight could give the Houston Cougars a win. We'll be back with the exciting conclusion in just a moment. Adams with a very high kick. See if the Cougars get coverage. And yes. they do inside the 20-yard line. It was returned by Keith McAfee. Chris Ellison was the first one down for the Terminators. Well, along look, with Tuggle. Look at it this way. No first down. If the Aggies can make one first down, this game is virtually over. If they cannot make a first down, Houston gets one crack. Exactly, because both teams with one timeout remaining. But a first down could give the Aggies maybe a couple of ticks and more yardage. Big, big possession. Richardson to Lewis, and he gets over right tackle, a gain of about four. Lamar Lathan on the tackle for Houston. 
Lathan closed down what looked like a hole. Oh, they're going to mark it back at the 20 now. And they're going to give him only two and a half on that run. Well, watch Latham come from behind and close down. Well, I tell you, he took the blocker on and oh. still made the tackle. What a load Lamar Latham is. Bucky Richardson facing second down. The Aggies need seven. Richardson. Action. Lewis. Oh, what a tackle. Montgomery. Alton Montgomery took on the blocker, submarined inside, and knocked Lewis a spinning. Watch the play second time that Montgomery has knocked Lewis T. Kettle over helmet. And now, if you're Houston and you make the stop on this play, you use your time out here to stop the clock and preserve as much time of this game as possible for your offense to use. Keep an eye on Gary Oliver, number 40, if a and would pass. I don't think they would. 316 remaining to play. Horton goes in motion. Richardson looking for Horton. He's got him. And he's got the first down. Horton, a big pass play from Bucky Richardson to Larry Horton. Alton Montgomery knocked him out of bounds. It was a safety first. And did you see how Richardson just kind of basketball? It's like he was shooting a free throw. He just lobbed it up in the air. Well, they got a man free in the flats. Houston Tackler had one shot at him. But one it, shot. But it did stop the clock since he yep. went out of bounds with 3.06. Remaining to play, first and 10 A&M. Ball on the 29-yard line. Lewis running through the tackle of Montgomery that time and getting out to about the 33-yard line. Well, as we go under three minutes, realize Houston still has that one timeout. Now, remember the timeout they used down at the goal line. Right. Now the Aggies will snap this ball with about 2.20 to go. Houston would not use the timeout after second down. They'd use it after third down if they can stop. The premium here is that Houston must stop if the Aggies get this first down. Kiss it good night. Second down and five. Richardson. Oh, oh almost a low snap to Lewis. First down, more. Lewis can go. 30 cuts back inside, and Jackson with the tackle. Darren Lewis with the big play. And upfield, there's a Houston player hurt. I'm not so sure it's not just exhaustion that's gotten to Norwood rather than an injury. Might have hurt his feelings on that play as Darren Lewis broke free. Boy, I'll tell you what, the Aggies flipped this ball back. It's a low snap. Lewis, first of all, has to get control of the ball. What a dangerous play to call in this situation, but it works superbly, 38 yards, and where's Lewis for the game now? That gives him 174 yards on 38 carries. My goodness, he's three carries short of the all-time Aggie record for carries in a game. Well, what did we say before the game? They were gonna try to give Lewis 25 plus carries, 150 yards plus. They have reached those two figures, and they are leading. Under two minutes remaining to play. The ball on the Houston 28-yard line. First and 10. Larry Horton cuts inside. And right there to meet him head on is Lamar Latham. Bill, I again I know it's I know it's AM's game right now to win or lose, but realize one other thing. Well Latham. That, that pitch is dangerous. He really took a whack. Latham holding his right forearm. Watch it again. Boy, the Cougars have to hope this isn't serious. They are not that deep, and you can't lose a superstar like a Lathan. Oh, boys, he is, he is really stout, and he's holding his right forearm. Oh, boy, he just absorbs a runner, doesn't he? Doesn't he? He just swallowed it. Lathan leaves. This ball will be marked ready for play. With 1.46 to go, and they will start the clock. Here it is. Grind the clock. The Aggies now have 25 seconds to snap it. Now, if somehow Houston could stop here, then stop once more, they might have 30 seconds, but... 23-16 A&M. 1.30 remaining to play in the game. Second down and nine. Lewis stopped 
right at the line of scrimmage. Montgomery and David Bearden, who checked in for Lamar Lathan. Now Lathan comes right back in for Bearden. Jackie Sherrill out on the field, going for win number 100. Boy, Houston let about four or five precious section, seconds get away by not knowing when to call that timeout. With a field goal, they'll probably turn it over to their defense with about 30 seconds to go if they don't get Felton the Felton Ransby and Mike Jones into the game for the Aggies. Third down and eight. Richardson on the option to Lewis. Lewis, Gone. touchdown A&M. What a game for Darren Lewis. Bill that puts him at exactly 200 yards. 26 yard touchdown puts him right at 2-0-0. Well, the Aggies kiss after every touchdown and I think Cheryl may have just given his star running back one on the sideline. Well, as good as that kid is, you might date him for the next two years if you're the head coach just to make sure he stays there. What a terrific player he is. That was 40 carries for Lewis on the afternoon for 201 yards and two touchdowns. Darren Lewis, he has done it offensively for the Aggies, and the Aggie defense has done it. Look at those statistics for Darren Lewis. Bill, is there a Texas A&M rushing record that's safe if that kid stays healthy? Oh, no. Watch him turn it on when he sees the crack here. See, he sees it right there. See it? You could almost see his eyes light up when he saw the crack in the defense. And guys like Lewis, a lot of runners think five yards. They think 10 yards. Lewis thinks end zone. Watch, watch the head turn when he sees the crack. There it is. What a good block on Lathan, too. That was Simmons, I believe, the fullback. Yep. Well, you talk about the running backs the Aggies have had. Ernest Jackson, Johnny Hector, Thomas Sanders. Go all the way back, of course, to our good friend, uh, assistant athletic director, associate athletic director at AM, John David Crow. Yes. Charlie Milstead. Quarterback, pretty good team over here with Jack Pardee in that backfield with John David. Oops, the spoon. Weatherspoon looking to go outside, find some running room, gets across the 30 to the 31 with about a minute left. Shane Garrett on the tackle for AM. Well, the Aggies now will go to two and three on the season. Houston will lose its first game in the last eight. Yep, first game since October of 1987. Houston will be three and one, but more importantly, one and one in the Southwest Conference. Now, Houston does the same thing that Tech does every week. Praise that AM beats everybody else. <laughs> it's going to be a scramble for the Cotton Bowl, isn't it? Yes, it of is. Of course, Arkansas and Texas, the game we have on HSE next week, could do a lot to decide who goes to the Cotton Bowl. Phillips and Ware was looking for him, and it was just a little short. Kevin Smith has grown up an awful lot in this game, hasn't it? Well, he got burned early. He made a sensational steal of the ball from Weatherspoon in the middle of the fourth quarter. Well, I tell you what, if you're a defensive back playing Houston, you either grow up or die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One Wait. or the other. It's the kind of game you go in and you spend a long time in the shower saying, thank God they're off our schedule for the rest of the year. 59 seconds. Left to play, Ware going to go long again, and this time covered on the play. Derek Ritchie was right out there. There's another youngster that's got Paul some Smith. time. Mm -hmm. Well, what the Cougars do is they really show you who you've got in your defensive backfield, don't you? Uh -huh. You get to play a lot of folks. Well, A&M for most of this game has been playing four cornerbacks. Uh, if you really want it, you know how they say you play a Three, four, four. and m for most of this game has been playing an 0-4-7. <laughs> well, the Cougars have gained 368 yards total offense. But that's awfully deceiving. Whoa. Here comes Aaron Wallace to wrap up Andre Ware.
clock runs and Houston doesn't seem to be in any great hurry to stop it. Here come receivers back who don't even have to play. Ware's going to call it out at the line of scrimmage. 18 seconds and counting down. Fourth down. This could be the last play here for Houston. And in this game. Ware across the middle intended for Phillips. Incomplete. And the Aggies will get the football. Kevin Smith defensing. I wonder if Lewis is going to come back on the field. Is Lewis going to come back out? I would doubt it. Six seconds left. There's Lewis. Now, if he carries the ball here, this ties the all-time Aggie record for carries in a game, 41. Well, did you see Jackie Sherrill shaking hands with R.C. Slocum, his defensive coordinator? Well, it's time to congratulate a lot of kids, those youngsters, Richie and the two Smiths, the defensive backs, the backups that played a lot today. But I'm telling you, if you give out only one game ball in this game, give it to R.C. Slocum for the defensive design. Yeah, I think, did you see Lewis come to the sideline? Jackie said, let's wait. We've got a couple more years for you to break that record. And Richardson will kneel down, and that will be the end of the ball game. So Jackie Sherrill gets win number 100 in his collegiate career. Jack Pardee, after watching his Cougars go undefeated in the last seven games, too many turnovers for the Cougars today and too much defense for the Aggies. Houston now goes to three and one on the season. A&M goes to two and three. More importantly, the Aggies are now undefeated, two and oh in the Southwest Conference, and Houston goes to one and one. The final score from the Dome, the Aggies 30 and the Cougars 16. the sports guys on KSAT 12 to be there no matter where no matter when when the Aggies went on probation the sports guys were there and when the Cowboys